having technical issues I <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> what the hell I was not expecting to be invisible that that's a mm, that's yeah that's a that's a first <laughs> oh my
my oh my goodness. That's like the last thing I want to happen. Sheesh. Also, this music's slow. Uh oh. Did I break it? Okay, good. Nice. There you go. That's a better start. That's a better start music. Hell yeah. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. So, so today, today, uh, wait, I forgot to do one thing. Fuck, wait, 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 And then, bet. Okay, now I'm good. <laughs> Sometimes I forget to do things. That's why I, my intro is so long. That way I could do stuff, um, while loading up the stream. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh, today we are going to do a raffle winner. So I hosted a raffle on Twitter. Uh, I do this quite regularly. And we have a lucky winner here. Uh, oh god, I've forgotten their username. Hold on, what is their username again? Uh, it is Lunacy Thief. There we go. I learned names last, I apologize. <laughs> but yeah, Lunacy Thief uh, won the raffle. So we're drawing their little cat character. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. So there it is. Ready? Three, two, one. Boom, 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 boom. Because I keep forgetting to add the sound effects to that. That, that uh, transition scene does have sound effects. I keep forgetting to add that. <laughs> bet, bet. Also, this is the artwork here. Or this is the uh, reference we'll be using. They also provided this one. And I'm like, this one's really cute. Like, look how cute that is. I kind of want to draw that one more. So we're going to do that one. Only because it's so cute. Right? It's not often I get to draw uh, just animals. And I mean like normal animals, not like furry animals. Because that one's really cute. It's like a Sailor Moon type of cat. Mm. Which I, I used to be a really big fan of Sailor Moon. That's why we're going to be drawing this one today. Mm. But yeah, in case... Uh, some people weren't here yesterday or did, uh, like just not caught up. We reached a hundred subscribers. Uh, sure that's not a big feat, but here I'm treating it like a big feat because you only get a hundred once. Unless y'all mass unsub, to which fuck you, I've got my eyes on you motherfuckers. But yeah, so tomorrow we'll be hosting a special stream to celebrate reaching that goal. Or that milestone, I should say. <laughs> uh, did you know that this profile picture that I am using has never received a body? Uh, however, I am planning to make the full body once I learn how to do clothes. Hey, yo, nice, nice. Hell yeah. I love, um, okay, personally, I love designing characters, so hopefully it goes really well for you. Like, there's nothing more satisfying than designing a character and then being really happy with the design. Being, yeah. I, ma I made this. This boyo, this boyo, I made this boyo, and they, they, uh, they amazing. They, they look nice. They look nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, we're gonna be doing uh, this art raffle. I have a few ideas of what I want to do because I want to draw like this as a, like a little, little I want to draw this cat. I want to draw this cat. Okay, this cat, cute. Okay, we're, we're drawing this cat, right? But I don't have much experience in drawing animals uh, like if you were to look through my art history it's all people <laughs> it's all people no furries no animals just people i know how to draw like little bunnies but that's because i used to draw rabbits like years ago because i used to be obsessed with drawing rabbits i can't even draw dogs they look goofy as fuck that's why i'm like struggling to make that png i promised of my uh my dog for when she's on stream because every time i attempt it it looks goofy as fuck so <laughs> So I have this idea because I want it to be like this big uh, thumbnail sized feature piece, right? And so my idea is, you know, you got the head, something like head here, body like this, like legs, you know, and the tail that kind of like does that. So that gives like the, because you know, you got the, you got this uh, moon shape here, right? And I kind of feel like it would be cool to incorporate it, not just in the head here, but also as a main piece, and then you can have like stars and stuff, you know. I think that would look uh, pretty cool. It's just the main problem. I am not very good at drawing animals, but I want to draw an animal. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna try. We're gonna try. <laughs> uh, 
And the tool of this avatar is 100% going to be a revolver. Hey, yo, nice. Yo, revolvers, uh, like the gun, they're, they're like, a, in my opinion, they're the nicest looking gun. Because, like, I don't know, but seeing the, the barrel spin and it, like, recoil and then the clicky little thing. I don't know much about a uh, gun uh, anatomy. Uh, but, like, the little clicky thing that, like, triggers the bullets to fucking fire. Like, that looks so cool and nice. Shotguns as well. I like the look of shotguns and rifles and stuff like that. But, like, revolvers are, like, pretty much S tier in guns. <laughs> That's coming from someone who lives in a country where guns are pretty much non-existent. Like, unless you're a farmer, they don't exist here. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. I reckon... Oh, I made that a bit overly... What the fuck? Uh, why is that like that? Hold on, let me fix this. Because that's like a, a weirdly wide shape. Okay, there we go. Got it. We got a classic circle head. <laughs> Okay, I reckon... Oh, this is gonna be hard because I'm not good at drawing cats. Okay, let's see how we go. It's like this. And then this. There we go. And then, now to draw uh, crescent moons, right? This is what I do. So I cheat with the, I cheat a little bit with the circle tool, but it's it's fine. Like only like people on Twitter will care, and like it's it's like it doesn't really matter. So like you do two circles. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, let me move this up a bit. You do two circles. You widen that up. And then you bring that back down. And there you go. It's a bit it's a bit dodgy looking for the time being, but like it will it'll work. This is the sketch layer, so as long as it tells me what it's meant to look like, there you go. That's how I do crescent moons. I just use the circle tool and fuck about. Obviously I can make it a lot cleaner, but that's fine. Yeah, I mostly watch uh, VTubers with a subscriber count of between 10 and 10,000k. Yeah, I tend to do the same. Very rarely do I watch uh, bigger VTubers. Because I find with bigger VTubers, you can't really have this one-on-one -on -one conversation like I am having like with you guys right now. Which I very much uh, like more. But, you know, you know, the creators don't choose, you know, their audience. They don't choose their sub counts, you know. So, like, it's kind of like a um, you-get-what-you-get sort of situation. Uh, the cat is basically a Sailor Moon uh, reference. Uh, if you ever watched it. Yeah, I, so I grew up with Sailor Moon. So I really... That's, uh, that's why I, I want to draw this cat character. Because I really love Sailor Moon. The problem is I can't draw eyes like that. So I'm going to have to improvise. But that's fine. So what we do is we do... This. Now, eyes are kind of anime. Now, my the issue is um, with anime and cartoon styles, right? So, anime eyes are like that, you know, uh, like, and then you got you know your, your eyelashes or something like this, you know, and then you got like your. Uh, You know, like, a, it's like that sort of style, and then you get your, like, your eye where it's like a, you know, a bit like that, so to speak. That's that's kind of like anime. Like, and obviously you can tell, like, I, I don't draw much in the way of anime, right? Like, I think it's pretty obvious I don't draw much in the way of anime. But, like, yeah, that's the anime eye. 
Whereas the eye I normally draw is the semicircle style. So my eye, my eyes art style stems from this art style here. That's normally the eyes I draw. So if I was to draw a similar sort of eye, I'll do literally this, like a. That is literally like my uh, art style's conversion of that exact same eye type. Maybe like some here as well, but that's other than that, it's very like simplistic. So it's hard to like uh, it's uh, that's like the hard thing about being an artist for the VTuber community is because my art style is so uh, cartoony, right? Sometimes it doesn't translate well. Like obviously, like the person receiving the artwork, they're not gonna notice it or really care to be honest. It's more like a an artist like me, it's sort of issue you know like a skill issue so to speak but like with me i noticed that you know when it comes to like more anime art styles it's where it's like the most hardest part i struggle because if it's realism you can get away with being cartoony because like people understand that when you're drawing something realistic it's gonna look a little bit cartoony you know but when it goes from one extreme cartoon style to another that's when it becomes like a visual translation er issue because then you have to translate like okay how many lashes up here how many lashes down there Got circle eyebrows, you know, so like stuff like this, you know, like it's it's like um, it's pretty much like a, a game of like a it's like a translation game, pretty much. There's nothing wrong with that though. Adds to the challenge. That's why I like drawing uh, other people's characters as well. Because otherwise, I'd be stuck drawing the same characters over and over and over. And, like, as much as I like my characters, you know, sometimes you need something new. You know, sometimes you want to draw something that you probably would never draw before. And that's okay, too. Uh... Okay, let me try this, and this, and my boom mic is in the way, but that's fine. Let me just lift it up. There we go. Okay. Hey, what the hell? Hey. 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 Let me get that. Thank you. I reckon I'm gonna leave a little edge from the uh, the bottom eyelashes to the line art because I don't know that that makes it look a little bit cuter. Doesn't it look cuter? I think it looks cuter. A bit like what they've done up here in this art style as well. I reckon I'm gonna do this, right? Okay. And then move that so that way it's a bit more. Bent. Now that's a, that's the funny thing too. I don't normally draw noses, so anytime I draw a nose, it's like mainly when it's like an animal, like a, a cat or something, or like if there has to be a nose feature, then I'll draw like a, like a little little dot, like a dot thing there. But other than that, I like almost never draw noses. Almost never.
Like, very rarely can you catch me, like, <laughs> drawing a nose. So it's a... It's also a challenge as well. Okay, let me just shrink that down. There we go. Okay, bet. Okay, and then we do this. There we go. Oh, I took the eyebrow. Oh my goodness. some dots there so that way when I vector this hey what the hell there we go it does that so that way I don't lose all the the circle I'm watching Cami stream while I'm on my eight minute break in McDonald's lol I just had my break now Ayo hey, nice <laughs> I respect the grind I respect the grind How's work? How's work? Is it good? Is it fun? Relaxing? Stressful? All of the above? <laughs> it's probably all of the above. That's a uh, that's, uh, fast food for you. Okay, that looks about right. There we go. Ooh, fries! Yeah, fries are so good. Oh my goodness. I like it when... Uh... Oh, I never did a saving thing. Uh, I love it when... Um... McDonald's does like a... Like, when you ask for extra salts, they make it extra fucking salty. Like... Mm -mm -mm. So good and tasty. That's all. It's it's honestly so fucking t good. Okay, over here. Uh, new, and then. Bet. Okay. Lunacy thief. There we go. That way I can save it. Otherwise, if we if something happens and I lose progress, Jesus Christ! <laughs> like it's the, my one worst fear is like losing all progress. Our manager actually lets us eat the product as long as we cook them ourselves. Yo, nice. Yeah, I reckon I'm gonna do something like this where the pole kind of comes around. Oh, this is where I'm gonna struggle. <laughs> I hold on. Let me Google cat and not a me real quick. Like, I need a I'm opening Spotify on accident. I need to Google what a cat looks like. <laughs> I type in cartoon cat and I get like some creepy shit. What is this? What is this fucking thing? 
I type in cartoon cat and I get some creepy bastard. What is this? Hold on. Where's my screen? Look at this. Look at this. Hold on. Fuck, don't do that. There we go. Look at this shit. Oh fuck, I'm on the wrong screen. Hold on. Look at this, okay. Okay. Look at this shit. What is this? What the fuck is this? I type in cartoon cat, so I hope I get like a cartoon cat anatomy, but what is this? Some creepy looking shit. <laughs> what is this? Uh, nasty ass. What the fuck? Cartoon cat is a creepy pasta. No shit. Look at that. What the hell? Disgusting. <laughs> what the fuck? I originally thought cartoon cat was part of Bendy and the Ink Machine. Honestly, I would agree with you. It does look a little bit of Bendy and the Ink Machine. Uh, I'm gonna make some food now, BRB. Bet. <laughs> okay, let me properly Google, um, cartoon cat drawing. There we go. That's a bit better. Uh, oh, not really. It's not exactly the pose I want in there. Oh. I guess it's also because, by looking at these reference images, I think it's also because I did it as one big, like, mound of mass. Whereas, I reckon if I draw it like, uh, like, like that, and then do, like, a bump thing, and then come back. Yeah, that looks better. That looks so much better. Okay, yeah. So, let me do this first. So, first, I'm, uh... Draw the leg out. And then the paw. There you go. Uh, oh, that looks a little bit chunky. A little bit chunky. I don't think uh, this cat's very chunky, like, like in the way I'm drawing it. Because the thing is, the neck's going to be, like, hidden behind the body. Because I want the body to be up like this. I guess I'll... If I draw the body. Like that. Okay, so that's the body. There we go. And so then, if I then pull that up. Probably get more leg room then, yeah. Okay, I've almost got it. Okay. Oh my god, I'm really not good at drawing cats. Holy shit. It's cute, but I'm fucking this up so bad. That's on me.
Oh my goodness. Sheesh, sheesh, sheesh. I think it's also because of this arm here. So if I fix this. Okay, make this one thinner, thicker, longer, bit longer. There we go. Oh, oh look at that baby! It's a baby. The baby? <laughs> The baby? <laughs> it's a masterpiece. It's cute and looking like. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you have faith in me. <laughs> Somebody's gonna have faith in me, I guess. <laughs> Cause I definitely fucking don't. So if I do this, move this over, and then like so, there we go, and get rid of that, there, so that's kind of like a, it's kind of like what I want it, mind you this body is a little bit chunky, I'm going to bring that down, there we go, cute cat, there we go, okay. I think I've got that right. I am not too sure, but you know what? E for effort. That's what I say. E for effort. Get that out of here. There we go. Cute! Okay, so that's the cat. There we go. Yeah, eight minute break is almost over. Oh, good. It's all good. Hope you enjoy the rest of your shift. For however long that shift is, wh whether it be 2 hours, 3 hours, 4 hours, 8 hours, 9 hours, 10 hours, 11 hours, 20 hours, all the hours. Hope you enjoyed your break. Now get back to work, you! <laughs> make some money, make some money. Success, success. Oh, I better draw the pause. There we go. There we go. And then what you do is copy and paste this. Oh. And 
and then copy paste this. And make sure it lines up as bestly as you can. There you go. So that way it has like a smooth like transition from like a thicker tail to like a thinner tail. And also the lines somewhat more mirror each other and like the line art kind of dances with itself. There you go. Look at that. Cute! Okay, I made it a bit big though, so let me bring this down. <laughs> there you go. Nice. So pretty. Cute cat, cute cat. Hell yeah, hell yeah. And then just to keep track of the, the color difference. Like that, there we go. So I know like how far I want the color difference to be. Uh, let's see. Let me just get rid of these lines here. There we go. Oh, I should also do this one here. There we go. Look how cute that is. Oh, excuse my yawn. Uh, my boss let me have five more minutes. Nice. Oh, it's four hours? Ayo. Oh my god, it's a fur- fuck you! It's not a furry, it's a cat. It's a normal cat. It's a normal cute cat. And I'm trying the draw. I'm not the- listen, I'm not the best at furries, okay? I'm not the best at animals. <laughs> I try my hardest and sometimes I succeed. Artist stream. Oh my god. Yes, yes. Welcome, welcome. I'm drawing a cat. Yeah, you're, more than, you're meant to have more than eight hours for four hours. True. I mean, it depends because, um, like, obviously I don't have, like, experience at the McDonald's, right? But, like, um, my, my guess is, my guess is that, um, you know, for, like, a... Because I'm guessing, like, you're in between, so I'm guessing you're doing, like, an eight-hour eight shift. So my guess is it's your, like, rest break and not, like, your full lunch. Because normally the rests... Oh, mind you, normally rests are, like, 15 minutes and then your break is, like... Your lunch is, like, 30. Could be wrong. Could, the, could be wrong there. Unless it's, like, a, a voluntary break. Voluntary br breaks are, like, 5 to 10 minutes. That's, like, if you need it, though. I hear, I hear McDonald's is, um, I hear McDonald's is really good for, like, say if you're struggling, like, you, you go up to your manager, like, hey, I'm, I'm struggling, I, I just need a quick five minutes, and they'll be like, yeah, sure, no, no, not a problem. What's your reason? And, yeah, not a problem. Like, I hear McDonald's is actually really supportive when it comes to that sort of stuff, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it depends on the, their country as well. Because some countries, like, they have different laws for that sort of stuff. Over in Australia, our laws are different. There we go. Just making their leg a bit longer. And then they put in an anime character here. Okay. I reckon I need to make this tail a smidge longer. So I'm going to move this cat over here. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this tail out a bit. <laughs> now this is going to be the hard part because I need to make sure it doesn't damage it at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab parts of it. 
like here, I reckon as well. Slowly stretch it out. There we go. Nice. Okay, that should that should be it there. You don't know uh, you don't know how hard it is not to make lewd jokes. True. Lewd jokes are pretty easy to make though. You just say these nuts in your mouth and then you know like um you know like imagine dragon these balls across your face like that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay. So see, when I stretched it, it does these little lines. So it's like, it's still lining up, but I've done some stretching. So that way it like fits properly. And look, it's like a, like the tail is being swung around as well. It looks really nice. And it's uh, implying like a, the crescent shape as well. And then what we can do here is then this person reference that they given, right? Let me just shrink this down a bit, which now I'm going to add in the middle here. So that way it's like a fe feature piece. Because if you think I was just going to do the cat on its own, then you're wrong, Bozo. You're wrong because the cat is with the person. Shut the fuck up and <laughs> I don't have a I don't have a soundboard. <laughs> I don't have a working soundboard just yet. I do have a soundboard, but like it's it's not on. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh my damn! She going ham? Yeah, I'm gonna do this on a separate. Okay, because it's a different character. I'm doing one character on this layer, another character on this layer. Only so that way, you know, when I do this and I go, oh, I want to, uh, I want to, like, I don't know, like, here's, here's a character, right? Little, little, we'll call him Bob, right? This is Bob, right? Say if I, I have an issue with how he's placed, right? And I'm like, hey, I don't like where Bob is in this frame. I can, like, move him separate from the, the drawing, right? So that's, that's the tip I always give. If you do, do digital art, and you're drawing multiple characters on the one scene, draw them on different fucking layers, okay? Because look, like, I had him here. Well, now I want him here. Now he's centered. Now I want to widen him. Now I'm gonna shrink him. You know, like, it's, it's, <laughs> you know, like, it makes it easier. It makes it easier for editing, you know, like, if you don't like the way stuff is sitting, you can edit it around a bit better and everything will, like, flow out more smoothly. Also, welcome late. I'm dad. <laughs> okay, we got this circle head here. Oh my god, that's so cute. Thank you. I'm trying my hardest to draw animals. I can't draw animals, but I want to try anyway. <laughs> so now let's draw the person. The person, the person. Which per people are easier to draw. They have a little bit of like the same thing I have with my lip, how like the the lip turns into like a little fang thing from what I'm seeing. So I'm gonna try and emulate that for them. There you go. Uh, it's not sharp enough. That's the thing, when you do like big round curves like that, you really need it to be sharp, otherwise it like makes the line confusing.
like a bit more sharper and then turn it uh, I reckon up that high like that that and that there you go Uh, actually, I'm not happy with that mouth. Let me fix this. There we go. That's better. Oh! My goodness. Give them more of a subtler cat mouth. There you go. Which, with this line removed, looks like that. It's like cute and small. Mm. Okay, I need to draw this crescent thing, so I'm gonna draw it a bit bigger. I'll show you the trick again, but this time, like, um, you know, a bit bigger. So, same thing as I did on the cat's forehead. You bring this down, right? Two circles, like so. Make it so they're, like, heavily overlapping, like that. And make sure it's on a vector layer as well. Reason being, you get your vector eraser. Straight through the middle of the top, and boom. Just like that, it's then edited. And because the human hand is never perfect with placing things centered, I can then flip that because it. I can notice it's sort of at an angle. And it should conform to my hand. There we go. There we go. Look at that. We got a crescent moon. That's at least how I do it. Obviously, how other people do it, that's, you know, how they do it. But that's how I do crescent moons. It's so much easier with the circle tool because then you get the exact line you want. And then we're going to draw the eyes. Now, their eyes are big and pretty. Right, so I reckon I'm gonna give them my classic doe eyes. Right? And my doe eyes, they're a bit like this. So, for people who aren't aware, uh, with my art style, I have different ways of drawing uh, eyes. Right? So that way, you know, because I like designing characters, I have different ways of, um, I guess, uh, like, to like emphasize like hey this character is this personality type without like uh outwardly saying it you know like if someone's a, bit, a little bit uh like you know you got someone here i'll show i'll show i'll show, I'll show. right if someone say uh, you got a character right uh let's draw just a quick uh quick head right this head and and mouth okay we'll do ge generic mouth here right that's the mouth right now let's say, uh, let's say, um, oh, we got a generic person, right? So we do semicircle. And then eyes, right? That's a generic person, right? But then we'll change the eyes and we'll do doe eyes. So doe eyes, they look like, uh, like this. Obviously, like, a bit better. Like, I'm obviously rushing, like, speeding through this. So, like, you know, do this, like that. Maybe they'll have big, like, flashy eyelashes, you know, stuff like that. Maybe, like, hair like this, you know, like, sort of that personality type. You know, we'll draw, draw the other side. That This is doe eyes right here, which is what I'm currently doing uh, on this character here. That's the doe eyes, right? So that's doe eyes, you know, all the lines, they're pretty much being pinched in this corner here. And in this corner over here, they're like out like this, right? So basically, uh, with eyes, they're like oval, right? So this is, this is the eye. So what I'm doing here is I'm bringing it down over here and up over here. But I'm bringing it, I'm bringing the height up here rather than height down here. Because if you'd bring a uh, height down to the bottom, right? 
So I have another one where like you bring height to the bottom of the head and it looks like this, right? So this is the same sort of thing, but upside down. If I get the line right, hold on. <laughs> you know, and then you'll have a character like this who, you know, that, that then, it, that's another facial expression. Just by changing the way the line is held on the face. You know, so now we have, like, maybe this character, I don't know, smokes weed. I don't fucking know. You know, like, this character, maybe they're more relaxed. Maybe they're introverted. You know, they seem more, like, of a relaxing type. Maybe they're, like, the depressed character. You know, like, and then you add, like, your eyebrows. You know, oh, that's... That's the weed person. Oh, like, oh, this is your, this is your, like, a uh, depressed character, you know? Like, designing characters is so fun. And, like, having, like, uh, systems in place as an art style where, like, you'd be like, ah, oh, yes, this is so that way I know how to draw this character type. Like, for example, uh, let's say I'm drawing an emo character, right? So we're gonna do this, right? So that's the hair, like, that's how the fringe is gonna sit. And then we're gonna go... You know, that, there you go, we've got the emo character. Just with, like, three simple lines, we've got an emo character, right? Just from fringe and hair alone, and then you can add, like, eyebrows like, uh, like this, if you want, or something. And that's just a fourth line. It is, you know, and then you can go, like, uh, eyelashes, so maybe, like, down here to be, like, a bit more emo, or you can do, like, uh, this, if you want it to be more, like, a hyper-femme uh sort of style or you or even combine both to be like a a pretty character you know at lip stuff like that you, you you know the drill you know the drill but that's basically like a how i kind of design my characters you know so right here i'm doing the dough look it, the dough look is basically um you normally do that um on more prettier characters so characters that i meant to have like natural beauty, you know, like a uh, what you call like um I don't know, like think of your Disney princesses, how they a lot of them, if you look at the art styles, when their eyes are open uh, till their to their fullest, a lot of them actually have doe eyes, where it comes, you know, it pinches at this corner here, right? It's open at this corner here, and the eye opens up like this rather than down here with this lid, it doesn't go down, it always goes up. It's very much an upward motion. Like, if you think about it, from this corner to this corner, it's a continuous flow, like that. So it goes up like that, and that's the doe eye. That's kind of like, um... That's kind of how I uh, do my art style, though. <laughs> there we go. I obviously how like other people do their art styles can like uh, uh, vary, but for me, that's how I do mine. So I'm gonna move that right like that. So that way she looks more like she's looking. Uh... Oh, that makes her look a bit cross-eyed. Uh, actually, turn that back around, widen that. There we go. That gives her a bit more of a cutesy look. There we go. And then, because this height here is different, I'm going to bring this one down. And there we go. Save that. And now what I'm seeing is she's got uh, eyelids, right? But I can't fit them in. My art style very rarely allows for, like, eyelids. Like... A lot of times, if I do eyelids, what I'll do, right, is say, uh, say, uh, I don't know, like, this is your eye here. What I'll do, if I do eyelids, I normally cut across like that. And then this will be, like, your eyelash here and stuff like that. That's normally how I do mine. 
Or what I can also do is say if this is the eye, right? If I want to do eye, an eyelid, I'll then just do that. Or under eyelid, which is that. Or this. Very rarely do I do like uh, in this anime example over here. That's just how my art style works though. It's just like a, just a play on different art styles. Mm -hmm. Now see, they do have an underline of their eye. And I know that's just actually like um, the eye, the iris doing uh, this under the eye. But I like the way it looks from a distance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a second line underneath, like so. And I'm going to bring this back, like so. And I need to make sure I don't make her look tired. Because obviously, like... Uh, if I do that, she's going to look tired. Like, and <clears throat> I don't know about you guys, but I don't want her to look tired. So we're going to do this. Uh, actually, this might not work. Maybe, maybe this looks better in my head. There we go. <laughs> Let me just fix these eyelashes. And then what I can do then again is do this. Thicken this top eye lid here. Same with this one. Uh, let me bring that one down. There we go. Uh, I reckon I might fix this. I reckon like this. Up. Only because the angle is awkward. That's on me though. Let me just fix that. there we go and now what we're gonna do is this this so we copy that bring that down bring that right down there we go and then same to the other eye make it slightly smaller so it doesn't look like I've just dragged and dropped the fucking exact same line turn that a bit so it fits a bit more a bit more smaller. There we go. And also, if you want to emulate looking to like the side, what you do is you grab the pupil and you move it to like a side. Like, for example, if I want it to pretend to be looking over there, there you go. Looks a bit weird because obviously she's looking the other way, but now she's looking over there. Put it in the center. Now she's looking at the camera, you know? If I put it over to here, just only slightly, only slightly, now she's looking to the side, right? So you can play with the, uh, the iris and, uh, you know, you'll, you'll get some good results. So let me just fix this. You only do it slightly though. If you do it too much, it looks a little bit uncanny. But that's how you get like either the at camera gaze or like the gaze away. So if you want the character to be looking semi towards the camera, but not directly like eye contact, that's kind of how you do it, you know. And it's a less it's a less confronting look as well, because the human mind uh, like naturally does not like uh, eye contact. Uh, that's like 
non-receptive, if that makes sense. That's why uh, when you get like stared at in public by a stranger, it makes, you know, a little bit uncomfortable, you know? I'm struggling to get this in the center. There we go. There we go. So right now, there you go. She's not looking at the camera. She's like looking... It's She's still looking in the direction of the camera, kind of. But she's not looking at the camera, if that makes sense. She's like just out of focus. There we go. Bit more over. There we go. Just out of focus, but not directly at the camera. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now what we're going to do is draw the eyebrows. Oh, actually, I'm going to move this crescent over. Because it is a tad in the way. Hmm. There we go. There we go. Boom, we got the head. Let me just move this over so it's more centered. And there you go. Look at that. So we got, that's the full doe eye look. So it's very cutesy, very like big, open wide, you know, with the slight smile. That's doe eyes. So that's kind of how I draw my doe eyes. She's also got a bit of a blush. I do want to emulate that quite a bit because honestly, anime blushes are quite cute. There we go. And I kind of might move this up as well. Because she will have bangs and I kind of don't want that hidden. And I also want it to be a bit more onto the cheek rather than just sitting there. I reckon as well I might clear that. And then just go copy, paste, and then drag and drop. Uh, oh. Okay, that doesn't like that. <laughs> Uh, oh, hi, uh, hey, yo, 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 welcome. There we go. There we go. So that's got the cutesy eyes. There we go. Cutesy eyes, nice mouth, crescent rose, little eyebrows and blush. There we go. We got a pretty little character. Hell yeah. And it matches with that cat too. Hey, what's this doing here? Boom, boom. There we go. Bet. Now I can see she's somewhat got longer hair, but she also has what I think is a uh, choker and a black top. So let's do this. So let's like that. So 
So I think I want that to be the anatomy. It's a bit tiny to the scalp, but that's all right. So I'll just do this. And then I just grab this. That way it takes up the majority of the skull again. And then I could grab this body again. There we go. This body is still not looking right, so let me just fix this by moving it all over. There we go. That looks a bit better. Let me just fix this line here. There we go. And now we bring the shoulder down. Oh, that shoulder's a bit down too low. Okay. Uh, that line's a bit wonky, but that's fine. really wide yeah isn't it why is that wide it's fine on that side ah uh, it's not fine on this side okay sorry if I pull this in ah uh, there you go see that was my problem and then this neck's not long enough and not back enough either There you go. See, sometimes it takes playing around. Around, If you've got issues, just play around a little bit. See if, like, um, it fixes the issue. Hi, hi. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm working on a art raffle winner. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. <laughs> there we go. And so now we do the choker. And then what we do here is a new one. Oh, let me just finish the shirt real quick. I think that's a low cut shirt. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do that. Then like a, this sort of thing here. And then I'm going to... Hmm, like this. So I can get a better cut to the sho shoulder. So that way it's a clear, it's clear where the shoulder is. Because... You don't want the shoulder leaning into the neck too much because our necks, like you can see on my model, our necks are like uh, different to the shoulder. It's not like one giant line, it's like a line curve line or line angle line, which is what I've done here, line angle line. Excuse me. I'm gonna get rid of this line here. And 
and then this line here there we go which will indicate our arm and now we do the hair now the reason why I'm drawing the hair on a separate layer is because there's little intricate pieces and I want to make sure that they don't clash with the face I've just drawn because I've put a lot of detail into the face I kind of don't want to lose it <laughs> I don't know you guys kind of don't want to lose it <laughs> Okay, so I've done my measurement there. There we go. And then there we go. Like so. I reckon it's a bit low on the shape, so I'll do that. There we go. Brings the shape back in. And then we're gonna do this long bang here. There we go. And I reckon I'm gonna do the same on the other side, so I'm just gonna. Because it's this, it looks like the same on both sides, but reverse, I'm just going to do the reverse on the other side. Except I'm going to do this. There we go. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Don't cut the entire layer. Holy shit. Don't do that. Oh my goodness. There we go. There we go. Now we reverse that for this side. I like how, uh, like, not, not messy, that's the wrong word, but like, um, how, like, wild the hair looks. It really is, like, a telling of the char character, like, it gives me, uh, it gives me gremlin vibes. Like, this person is a little, a little, little, they're cute, but they're a gremlin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There we go. And then we got the cat ears. Can't forget the cat ears. Now the thing is, I don't see this top of the head. So it's kind of hard to guess what's going on reference wise. So I'll just have to fill in the gaps myself, but that's fine. I don't mind filling in the gaps myself because then it gives me a little bit of creative freedom. That allows me to be a little bit creative in my guessing. Okay. I do know there's a line here. I 
Okay, bet. There we go. Now, another thing I'm seeing is there's a little bit of fluff at the bottom of the ears. So what I'm going to do is this. Like that. And now I'm going to bring this down because I've brought that a little bit too high up. There we go. Mm, actually, I don't like that. There we go. And then boom. There we go. That way it adds a little bit of like fluff inside the ear. We can pretend like her ears are nice and fluffy. And now we could go up top here. And now because there's a lot of spikiness going on like here and here and also like here, it's safe to assume that up here is probably spiky as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish a middle. So I reckon here. And I reckon do that. Okay. And then I'm going to flip this because this one has a lot of mirroring. There we go. Oh, cute. Nice. There we go. And then, because it keeps going. Like that. Make it a bit thinner. Maybe even turn it a bit. So that we get that piece to properly fit. And there we go. I reckon if I do this as well, there we go. Let me just quickly pull this in. There we go. And because the hair gets long, I reckon. Oh, I've put it on the wrong brush. Like that. There we go. And now let's fix up the scalp. Uh. 
There we go. Let's see, is that character in the right spot that I want them? Looks like it. I reckon what I want to do is I might make this character bigger. Like so, there we go. And I reckon I might bring this cat in a little bit. Just a little. There we go. Just like that. So look at that. Nice, pretty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now what we can do is we can then erase this, erase this, erase this, 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 this. To see how it all looks. There we go. That's how it's all gonna look. So that's the sketch done. Now the thing is with this cat here, it looks really good actually. Problem is, a lot of these lines are disconnected. So I'm just gonna connect them again. You just do that by stretching it out. Like that, just a quick gentle stretch out. Only a little. There we go. And like that, we reconnect those lines. That's just from stretching out the tail from earlier. That's what we're reconnecting right now. There we go. Now the question is, because I do really like this sketch, what I tend to do sometimes is when I really like a sketch, I turn it into the liner. Because otherwise you lose the charm of the, the, the sketch layer. Because sometimes I do really good sketches, and then when I do the liner, it looks like shit. So I don't like to jinx it, I like to like uh, play with it. So I reckon, because I actually do like the sketch of this. Let me take a look at it in black. Yeah, that actually looks really nice. Oh my goodness. That looks so nice. Let me just do a quick cleanup actually. Yeah, I'm actually gonna just use this line art here. I'm gonna use this as line art. <laughs> Let me just get rid of these lines here because they're just to tell me like, hey, Bozo, this is where the ombre goes. Okay, bring those lines out because I did want lines sticking out over the paws to indicate claws. There we go. And let me just quickly grab this here. There we go. So now I'm just editing the line art so that way it's a bit more smoother. That's why I also like drawing on vectors because sometimes if line art's a bit wobbly I can just go in and fix it. Get it to be a bit more cleaner. I know people use stabilizer tools as well. I personally don't. I find them a bit like inaccurate with my lines sometimes, so I just choose not to use them. No biggie if you do though. You know, sometimes some tools help people and with others they don't. I don't, I don't know. I find personally the, st the stabilizer tool doesn't translate my lines very well and looks a little bit artificial as well. Whereas here, you can see the wobbles of my hand. You can see it's like handmade, which I think adds to the charm. It makes it look more of like an indie artist rather than a professional artist, which I like that more. Cause then it's like, I don't know, it brings like an uh, attraction to it where it's like, you know, you find it's like, oh, this is like a tiny artist. Whereas if I draw really well, people are like, oh, this is a professional artist. Look at it once and go. Yeah. So it, it kind of like uh, brings down the professionalism a little bit, I'm aware of that, but that's kind of 
my strategy when it comes to drawing my artwork. I want it to look slightly unprofessional, like lower than the professional standard. That way it attracts people in who are more interested in indie artists. Because otherwise, if you draw too good, people might not think you're an indie. That's at least uh, the impression I get a lot of the time. It's all a strategy, gamers! <laughs> so yeah. So now we get to the fun part, the coloring! Woo! Coloring! <laughs> Actually, what I am gonna do, because the, the crescent is a really thin line on the head, right? I reckon I'm gonna fix that. Oh, what am I gonna fix it to? No, no idea. But... I do have an idea. Ha. Huh. Let me just fix this. There we go. Just cleaning up these lines here. Just to make sure it's not like uh, over layering, I guess, if that makes sense. It's like um, still looking natural. There we go. There we go. So there, now we have a nice clean shoulder. And now we do the line art. So this is the cat. This is the person. Because I'm pretty much ready to color, I can now merge them onto the one layer. Bring out a normal layer. Can't really do bucket tool with a, uh, uh, what's you call it? With, um, with, uh, the vector layer, it actually like doesn't like that, so you have to use a normal layer, which is good. So here, let me just do this. So I got the skin first. There we go. Then we got the hair first. It's also the color of the cat, so let me just quickly do this, 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 this. Uh, that's white, so that's all good. We'll leave that there. And then bring the cat illustration in. There we go. And now we color the cat. Which that's going to color most of the fucking cat. But that's fine. Um, I'm actually going to color this as well. Because I can do a layer on top. So let me just bring this in. Uh, oops. There we go. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, that is white, but I don't like working with exact whites. I'm just going to bring this up here. Uh, oh, actually, no. It, the, I'm working with the inner now. So, basically. Boom. Boom. Did that really just color both? Shit. Damn, I'm gaming. There we go. And now we're going to do the black for the choker. It is meant to be a darker color here. So I'm going to do this. Bring that in. There we go. And then same thing for the shirt. It's only going to be a slight difference. But when we do the hair shading, I'm going to add some slight color to the hair. Same thing as what I did with... Um, who, oh, whose art was it? It was... Shit. I think Lord Vermeer. Yeah, I think with Lord of Amaya, we did it as well. I was going to change the line volumes on this, wasn't I? Oh shit, I'm like jumping the gun here. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Okay, let me let me delete this. It's fine, it's only flat colors. I was meant to change the uh, line values. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> Fuck me. Uh, 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 uh. So we're going to narrow this down. So let's do this. I like playing with this tool because it like... um. Brings a bit more width and weight to your characters. 
Well, that's going to be a bit awkward, those lines, yeah. Uh, connect vector line. Uh, what the fuck is it? Hey! Hey, what the hell? Hey, what the fuck, man? What the fuck? God damn! Sheesh. Fine, I guess I'm doing this the hard way. God damn. Try to do it the easy way. No. Fuck. Do it the easy way, Cam. You won't. Damn. Guess you right, eh? Uh, bring this down. Why are you... Why are you like this? There we go. Uh, connect. There we go. Connect. There we go. And now we continue adjusting the line width. There we go. And just like that, look how much uh, detail that adds by um, changing the width of the lines. I should have saved like uh, what it looked like before I did the line width changes. But that's all right. That's fine. Then we're gonna do thicken. Bring it back a little bit with these some of these edges. There we go. And there we go. So that kind of helps the crescent like blend in a little bit as well with the line art rather than being like a stark like stick out. I sometimes forget that tool exists. <laughs> I sometimes forget to change line art sizes because like it's such a easy tool to forget. So that's why a lot of my uh, line art is very thick whereas I can actually like change it at any like point. That's why I love the vector layer because you can do so much with it. So much with it. Okay, now we can color. Now we can color. I would have left the colors on, but because we're changing the line art, it would change the values of everything. You kind of don't want to, like, be fiddling with that if you're fiddling with, um, you know, colors. The cat does the same thing, yeah? Okay, yeah, the cat does the same thing. Okay, nice. So it's the same character button cat form.
and then we get a line here. Oh shit! Oh shit! What? Huh? 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 Why the fuck not, you stupid bastard? Where? 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 There we go. There we go. And then for the eyebrows, hold on, let me just fix this so it's not sticking out. There we go. And now for the eyebrows, I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. Skull. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel like I should have done the coloring on separate layers. Like the the skin and shit. And I feel like I fucked up. Cause I'm drawing this like emotes when really I shouldn't be. Oh well. Ah, oh, it's fine, fuck it. We got the pink here. I'm gonna bring this over to the red here a little bit. Just so it's a bit more earthy. There we go. And boom. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna onion this. Now we're gonna click this white here. I'm gonna grab. Mind you, that's pink over there, so I'm not going to grab that white. I'm going to grab this direct white here, bring it over the blue hue, hue and right there. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it on with this opaque brush. There we go. Put it down like this and then back up again there we go now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna remove this select here 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 and here and then I'm gonna select uh, here 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 and here they're gonna turn this on again Oh, I might select uh, here as well. Hold on. Uh, that's a good idea. Uh, here. Oops. And just like that, I'm now going to uh, clear. And then anything that didn't make, make it means that it's on an area that's not safe to do that method to, which means I then go hard. There we go. Using my hard eraser. And then get rid of it. And then using the soft eraser, or even the kneaded. I can kneaded. Actually, I need to go a bit lighter with that kneaded eraser.
There we go. Like that, and then same thing on this side. And then if we don't get the line off, that's fine. We just use this soft brush and it gets rid of the harshness. There we go. Same on this side. Helps us get rid of the harshness. Click save. And so now we got the ears going. So the ears are nice and lighter. Mind you, it's not exactly a white. So let me just fix that. There we go. Uh, maybe a bit darker. There we go. That's better. I'm then going to use this opportunity as well while I have this color selected to fill that in as well as fix these colors. And by fix, I mean, because that was just me badly wording it, I mean by drawing this here because I've got the eyes open with these gaps, which means the bucket tool will not be as effective. So it, mean, it just means I have to be a smidgen more creative. Oops. There we go. And then this side again. There we go. <laughs> Just like that. Now we save. I reckon we have it on the other side. Oh, no. Okay, we'll do the other side. Go back. Uh, over here. There we go. So it's a bit more on the grey hue, but it's not exactly white. Because I, I still want to highlight with the white on the eye, which means I need to make the sclera like a, a lighter colour. Well, not lighter, a more grey colour. Otherwise, if I go on top with a white, it won't look good. So if I now go on top with a white, you can see it highlights over both. Like that. Which will look nice because they've got a nice, uh, they seem to have a nice uh, glittery eye effect. And I want to replicate that over the entire eyeball rather than just the iris. As well as the fact I don't like working with solid whites and blacks. I like to give myself a little bit of a challenge. That too, that too. <laughs> okay, now we do this again. Uh, there we go. So now we just Nope, fix that, okay.
There we go. And I think the ears are also... Yes, they are. Nice catch, Cammy. Okay, bet. And so now, I can then kind of fix this. I've got the wrong eraser on. Oh my goodness. There we go. So I kind of want this to be on the hard eraser at first. Alright. Let me just get rid of this. Uh, actually, don't do that because I'll be an idiot if I do. Because I would have erased what I did on the tail. There we go. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to then fix this. There we go. There we go. Oops, shit. That's fine. <laughs> uh, then we bring this down so we can then do this side like that. There we go. And then we can fix it over here like so. There we go. And now... Oh, first of all, I need to do this. There we go. That way it comes a bit more down. There we go. And then, like so, I can then erase that again. I'm bringing it basically down to the base of the skull. That way when I add the pink, it like attaches to the color a bit better. There we go. Okay, and then I can just scribble this out. There we go. And let me just quickly go up here. I'm going to get rid of this ear here so that I can see how far it's gone down the scalp. Because otherwise I'll never know. So this all here needs to go. Just like that, boom. And now what we're gonna do as well, is cause even though it's done well, it's not as a good transition. It looks like socks right now, like a sock pattern. It's gonna do a blend. So we can get kind of that like layering look out of it. 
I'm being very gentle because I don't want to over blend and I want it to look like somewhat nice. So I'm being very, uh, very slow. Very slow. There we go. Same with up here. I'm going to be very slow. And yeah, that looks alright to me. There we go. And so that way, when we also do the shading on the fur, by having uh, the, the white again, the same as the uh, like eye color, it means when I draw with white on top, you can see it. Oh, uh, save. So that way, when I when I highlight it, you can see that it is in fact highlighted, and it's a three dimensional object rather than a two dimensional one. At least that's that's meant to be like the uh, the implication or the the suggestion or the symbolization or whatever the fuck you wanna whatever word you wanna use. It's it's, it's all the same thing. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh. I'm gonna merge these layers. Hold on, let me just double check that these are all correct. Uh, yes, these. Uh, oh, I forgot to do the pink here. So let me merge this with this. There we go. Do that, that. And now we're gonna just a little bit of pink. Whoa, okay. Opened up a window, what the hell? There we go. And so what this is going to do is just going to add a little bit of a pink uh, colouring to the ear. There we go. And then what we can do here is then need it eraser it down. So whittle it. There we go. And it gives it a, just a little bit of texture. Like that. So it looks a bit more like fur rather than like a solid line. And then we merge that. And merge that. Mm -hmm. So now the reason why I've merged those is because now I'm going to do this, this. I'm going to bring this up. Uh, what the fuck? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, that's fine. Wait, 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 wait. I've done that wrong. Hold on. Okay, bet. Okay, copy and paste. There we go. Oops, uh, no, wrong button. There we go. And then we're gonna go save, filter, blur. There we go. And down like that. And then we're gonna go soft. And just save some of that face. Not all of it, just some. Same over here. Maybe some details we bring them back. And then we merge that down on that layer. So that helps gives the liner a little bit of a color guide. 
makes it blend a bit better. Obviously, I'll do more touch-ups with the uh, line art closer to the end, but it gives it like a bit more color throughout. Makes it look softer as well. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do the skin. So the skin here, luckily they've already got a blush going on. So I'm gonna use the exact same blush they did. Excuse me. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a running water color. It's a, a nice soft brush. There we go. And I'm also gonna bring this to the middle of the face like they did. Hello! Welcome, welcome. So I'm gonna be very generous with the blush, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna be very generous on the lip here. There we go. And now I'm gonna remove this from the lip. Or from the upper lip, I should say. Lower lip is fine. And then I'm gonna remove this from the eyes. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Like so. So it looks a little bit like this, right? Now what I'm also going to do here is I'm then going to grab this, bring this over to this color here. And I'm going to see... Okay, so there's almost no color in that. So then I'm going to grab over here, pull it up, pull it over to yellow, slightly over to put some white in it, and there you go. So that there is going to give me my... Uh, what you call it? like a little highlight under the eye. And what I'm doing is I'm extending it. See how I've extended it like a uh, right here. I've extended it past like flat. That's because I'm then going to use a soft tool, which I'm going to show you in a minute to help it blend out a bit. So I don't need to blend it with this brush. I can use a different brush to blend it out for me. So I bring it all the way out past where I want it to be. Right. Well and truly past it. And then eraser, so we're going to go kneaded, so that way it has a bit of texture, and until the end fades away. Same with the other side, it could be a bit more rougher though. Save that, and there you go, a nice smooth transition. I'm not really a person who uses Twitter. That's okay. A lot of people don't use Twitter. I am very much addicted to Twitter. Like, even though I don't really post much on there, I am on there pretty much every day. If I'm not watching videos or listening to music or playing games, I'm on Twitter. Like, 100%. I reckon it takes up most of my day. <laughs> but yeah, so that's basically the eye makeup done. I am tempted to do a... Uh, shadow on the upper eyelids but i'm not going to do that because the face already has so much i feel like if i do that it'll be a little bit too much so i'm gonna not do that and instead i'm gonna opt to now uh using the exact same color that i've just used here and i'm now gonna shade the lips so basically what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do a little circle like so with a little dot and then what I can do here is I can then adjust line width. Uh, is that th no, that's thicken. I'm going to bring it to, to narrow. There you go. And what that does, that actually dims the color on the normal layer rather than on the vector layer where it actually thins it. And what that does is that actually brings that back almost to the same color as the skin tone. Like, if I were to grab this and pull this down onto the skin tone, that's almost the same color as the skin tone. And so then what I do here is I then grab this uh, airbrush, do it nice and soft, make it small, just slightly on top. Just uh, not too much, you want it barely noticeable. There you go. Just like that. 
And then what we're going to do is we're then going to go back, pick up our color that we used earlier. And again, on top, I'm going to make it a bit more hidden. And there we go. I might fix it a bit. That looks a bit wonky. There we go. So now the lip's still shiny, but it's not like an intense shiny. It's like, it's like an, it can hold its own weight pretty much. And now what we can do is do new layer. And now we're going to shade the skin. So I'll show you how I shade the skin. I have multiple ways of shading skin. This, because uh, this image here is so colorful and pink, I'm going to go shading similar to this rather than the way I normally shade, which is I normally shade per color. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to shade uh, to add more color into the shading. So I'm going to select this uh, uh, skin color here, this brown, right? And see where it's sitting here on the uh, the color wheel on the left? I know it's kind of hard to see. My chat almost cuts it off. I'm then going to pull this color without adjusting it all the way to the deep purple. Without moving it on the uh, like this part here. I don't want to move it on this part here. So let me just select that color again. Just all the way to the deep purple. Not exactly in blue, a little bit in blue, but not all the way in blue. We'll just go a slight purple, all right? And now what we're going to do is we're going to do two tricks, okay? So firstly, let me just get rid of this so that way I have a better chance of shading this without the distraction of those highlights. What I'm going to do is going to do two tricks. One is this. We colored it all in. I know, trust you got to trust the process with this one. you got to trust the process. Oh, shit. There we go. Trust the process, gamers. And so now we get the eraser. We're going to go soft. And now we do this, right? Pretty basic stuff. Like that. We're going to actually add that back in. There we go. Only adding it back in because the head should not be shaded just like the neck. They should be shaded too differently. Because they are too differently. There we go. And just like that, you can already see the color is coming through. It's light, but there's a reason for that. We're going to play with it in a minute. And so now that I've done that, what I'm then going to do is hide that. Okay, so we've got our shading here. Hide this. Open up another layer. And I'm going to do the same thing again. But this time, we're now going to do the proper shading. So basically, you know, we go down to the neck, uh, down like here, down like that. So this is more our harder shading. And then we're going to get uh, this eraser here, erase it properly. So it's not like on these other layers here. There we go. This part will take longer, but that's... Pfft, blah. It don't matter. There we go. Make it a bit more of a sharper angle. Dough brain, you're a dot... You're a dot brain, yeah? Drop brain, what did you write there? What the heck? What the heck? I can't read for shit. There we go. Like so. Also going to do a little bit here. And here. There we 
There we go. You have a rock hard brain? Yo, that sounds kind of gay. <laughs> oh, I've done that wrong. So now I'm going to shade. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little shading trick. Okay? And that's basically, uh, see how I've left the gap? It's not like directly connected to the line out here. There's like a, a, just a gap just here. And it gives the hair a bit more of like a suspended feeling. Like it's actually like shading the area. I'm also going to do this, but I will obviously bring the color back. So that way it's not like an intense shading in the center of the face, so to speak. It's more like um, a what you call it. There we go. What I'm also going to do is just slide like here and here. Oh shit, don't grab that. <laughs> don't grab that, shit. <laughs> oh my god. We're going to do needed eraser again. It's mainly just for the eyes here. And it'll just make the shading a bit more complex. Also bring it back a bit. Also brings a tad of texture in as well. And so now when we bring back this layer, it should look like that. And then when we bring the makeup, it'll look like that. So that's kind of what it's going to look like. To which, let me just bring that back a bit again. Okay. So now that's the shading done. So I'm going to merge these two because I kind of want them to be on the same layer. And now I'm going to do the highlights as well. Because obviously you can't have shadow without light. It's kind of, kind of like a, they kind of go hand in hand. <laughs> so what we're going to do, uh. same thing, grab this color. You grab the, the thing and you pull it to a warm. Now the warm is red, but if we do that, we actually... Because we're already closer to yellow than we are to red, if we bring it to a warm, which is red, we will actually create a shade. So, especially with skin, that's like, skin's the hardest thing to shade, right? So what we do is we bring it to a yellow, just over slightly, and then we pull up at an angle. That's kind of, that's kind of how, that's kind of how I do it. <laughs> Obviously, you don't have to follow it like a, to a T of how I do it, but... I mean, some people need guidance, you know, like, um, like, uh, like people like will ask and be like, Hey, I don't know how to do this thing. Can you tell me? So that's kind of like why I, I, I like, uh, 
kind of tell people why I, I do the stuff I do. You know, like, oh, I do it like this. I do it like this. I do this. I do that. Well, VTubers do burp. Case closed. Hey, yo. Yeah, they do. I'm an example of them. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. And that's just moving the highlights here like this. There we go. And then again. Except this time, it'll be a bit more intense. Oh, is this a CSGO fucking remix? Oh my god! Bomb has been planted. Oh yeah. We're CSGO in this bitch. I used to love CSGO. I wasn't any good, but like, I, I still enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm gonna bring the circles there. Again, needed, needed. Uh, let me just get the hard brush so that way I can move this uh, excess that I won't be using. I'm also gonna do the side of the neck here. Uh, use the hard brush, erase it on the choker. Needed. There we go. There we go. And then I'm also going to get soft and just um, get rid of that harsh line there. Only a little, not by much. There we go. Let me just fix that. I did that really poorly then. I can do better. There we go. There we go. Whoa! Holy shit. Hate it when it does that. And then boom. Just like that. So then, with both highlights and shading, it will look like that. And because purple and yellow are uh, polar opposites, they're, op they're opposite each other on the color wheel, they will actually interact. So now what we do, as first we save, because we don't want to lose our progress, right? This isn't where the color the colors end, right? So what we do is we go to normal, overlay, no, not overlay, we go to multiply, there we go, multiply. So then it brings it back down. We still got the purple in it, but we're still like, we're still in it. And then with the highlights, we go overlay. And just like that, boom. And then we put the makeup on top, boom. And just like that, boom. We got the, we got the skin shaded. We got the skin shaded, gang. We got the skin shaded, gang. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> That's kind of that's kind of how I shade. That's kind of how I uh, cuz I have multiple ways ways of uh, shading cuz I do all sorts of different art stuff, but this one is probably like my favorite way to shade because it brings so much texture out on it. And I think it looks really nice. Really nice. And it it makes a pop as well. It makes it pop. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, so remember, multiply for the shading. 
overlay for the highlight. Overlay, it'll, it'll like screen it almost. It'll like make it scream on the colors. Whereas, uh, is it multiply? Yeah, multiply will actually just make it like deepen into the color below. So think of overlay as up and multiply as down. That's kind of like, that's kind of how it's meant to work. <laughs> I'm done with my shift, yo. Welcome, welcome! Bad, bad. We just colored the skin. We just colored the skin. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Now we're gonna do the hair of this character. And I'm gonna color the hair, and then I'm gonna color the cat fur. And then I'm gonna go back with final touches onto the hair, because I kind of want the shading to be the same. But hair and fur are two different... Uh, fuzz types you know because hair is more long refined and fine whereas hair, uh cat fur it's insulating it's meant to keep the creature warm whereas ours is more like you know we don't really use it anymore as like an insulation thing so it's kind of lost its uh properties and when you have like a, an animal that creates really long hair it goes from short and compact to like long and coarse so that's kind of like so hair and that's why hair and fur have such different textures, you know, and then you've got different hair types on top of that and you know it, it, Hair is honestly like it's such an interesting material Like did you know that there is a uh, there's a uh, what you call it? There's a um There's a hairdressing system in place to clean up oil in the ocean where basically uh, there's some hairdressers that will donate uh, cut hair Right? So the hair, when you go to the hairdresser, they cut the hair, it falls under the floor, sweep it away. Normally they put it in the bin. There are some hairdressers in the world where they collect that, and rather than putting it in the bin, they will donate it to cleanup crews, who will put it in these, like, stocking-like bags. Because our hair naturally, like, picks up oil. And so what they'll do is then they'll use that out in the oceans to clean up any oil spillage. So it's it's a really it's a really clever cleaning system because down to um, the small like the small scale of our hair like if you were to go under a micro microscope our hair is basically just scales right it's like scale after scale after scale after scale that's why it matters when you cut it and care for it and why uh, it's important that you fix it when your hair splits. Because our hair is like, it's it's kind of like, it's scaled. And that's why a uh, product can stick to it. Because it, it, like, it's just, it's just all scale. It's real. It's really cool. Hair is such an interesting material. Uh, from the knowledge of so uh, soft panties, I don't have an enough break for my shift. Yeah, you're definitely being like a shaft to do break. <laughs> Did someone say oil? Oil! <laughs> but let me take a quick sip before I do the hair. I'm gonna do the same thing. Because again, the reason why I'm shading with yellows and purples rather than my normal uh, uh, normal shading technique is because I'm trying to bring more color onto it. Because I'm gonna make this nice and colorful. I basically want to flex that I am good at coloring. <laughs> That's basically what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, also, I might as well. What I'm gonna do is to bring even more color onto this. So I'm gonna get rid of all of this here. I'm gonna grab the skin here, go up, pull it down right just there. I'm gonna bring it to this red. I'm gonna then do this. Right, trust the method. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing as I did for the shading, except I'm going to be a little bit more rougher. There you go. Uh, what the fuck is going on? Oh, okay. There you go. Uh, there we go. So that's bringing even more color out. But the thing is, it's the wrong type of color. I don't want it to go pink. 
So again, what pulls down, multiply. Boom. And so now we've got more of like a ready skin tone. So now I bring it back to, I'm going to say 55. And boom, there we go. So it's, we still got that purple in there, but it, it, we're now we've got a bit more darker in the forehead, you know, and the color shifts from our skin tone to a yellow to the highlights. And then for the shade, it goes from our skin tone to the purple and then a slight like purpley lipstick red. So then it, it like transitions through multiple colors rather than just uh, yellow skin, purple. It goes yellow skin, purple, red. So it like gets it more, multiple uh, color depths per se. Mm. Uh, let's see. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new, not vector, holy shit. Uh, vector's no good for this. Open a new layer, make it into the folder, because the hair will be so complex to shade, because not only are we shading the hair, we're shading the cat. I'll need to get rid of that. <laughs> what I'm also going to do is I'm going to create another folder. Hey, 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 whoa, okay. And I'm going to bring this all down. Huh, it's done that. Okay, well, what are you doing? Hey. Hey, you stinky. Oh my god, it's gonna do the thing! Ah! Okay, let me get rid of this. Okay, and then we're gonna put it in there. There we go, okay, thank god. Fuck. Oh. oh my god, stop! Stop it! Away! Why? <sighs> Why? Why are you like this? Oh my god, I've done this wrong. Well, so much for that idea. I guess we're going back the old-fashioned way without the folders because I did all the I did the base coloring all on one layer like a fucking idiot. <laughs> oh well, oh well, oh well. <laughs> so what we're gonna do? We grab the blue. Now the thing is, we're already in the cool shades. So if you if you don't know, blue is cool. So everything from purple to blue to green on the color wheel is the cool colors. And everything from pink to red to yellow are the warm colors. You know, warms are for highlights or bringing flesh into the mix. Whereas your cools are to bring things colder and for shading and stuff like that. But the thing is, because this hair is black, a lot of times when people color uh, black hair, they will go in more into the blue hue because it has a more cooler and neutralizing effect. Like for example, if I were to, so I've got the same color, I'm on the same shading level on my color wheel, but if I were to go to the red hue instead and color it, it looks like that. So you get more of like a brown rather than a jet black. And so for some people, they do like it dark brown, others, to simulate the jet black uh, hair color, they will lean more into the blue hue. Or the blue side of the color wheel. That way, you're not having to actually go jet black. You can, like, simulate it, if that makes sense. Because it looks like a gray without actually being gray. <laughs> so now we basically do that. And because I'm already on the blue side... What I'm going to do is I'm then going to pull it all the way to purple again. And this is going to be hard because, like, uh, it's, oh, it's, all right. uh, it's, it's already all fucking... Ah! Uh, why is it doing that? 
Hey. Why are you... Why are you like this? Hmm. Why are you doing this to me? Why not, you stupid bastard? Why is this doing this? Why is it doing this? Does this look really bad? Oh, you can't exactly see it. Yes, you can! Grr. Angry. What the fuck? Wah! Wah! Ah! Oh my god. This is why I cut the line out last. I need to remember that. I keep forgetting. Keep forgetting. Color the line art last, Cammy. That way you don't have any oopsie, oopsie daisies, Cammy. Shit. 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 There we go. God, it's being really fucking annoying. Okay. Is that good? That looks good to me. Okay, good. Okay, so we click save on that. Now you might think, Cammy. You've just colored over the hair. It, it it looks hardly it looks hardly different. But if you remember, if you remember right, when we click multiply, it will go dark. Right? So it's a it's a matter of trusting <laughs> it's a matter of trusting method. What I can do as well to better see is I just put it on multiply and then I can see more, you know. And you can see it's taking effect because on the lighter parts of the ears, it is different to the darker part of the hair. So what we do, again, same thing. We just bring it out. And we do it as one solid mass on this uh, wipe through. Rather than trying to go into the intricate hairs. Because that will be way too much work, you know. There we go. And then we do the same thing, but now we can go in with a bit more detail. So. Hey, what is going on over here? What is going on over here? What the hell? What the fuck? Hey. Wah. Who's done that? Oh my god, okay, so the skin has done that. Let me fix that. Bet, okay. And so now we go back to this uh, blue. Right here, pull it over to the purple. Might even pull it over to the pink. Give it a bit more of a push. Yeah, save. Instead of cooking for myself, I bought the food uh, uh, on the McDonald's at work. Nice. 
20% off because I work there. Yeah, the staff discount? Yeah. I'm pretty sure, like, all uh, staff members there get a staff discount of, like, 20%. As long as you have the... I think the Macca's app or something? Because that's where you get all the, the code deals, right? I'm pretty sure. I don't know, that's just my guess. <laughs> now, shading hair is very different to shading, um... What you call it? Shading skin. Skin is one solid bit thing, right? Like if you were to touch your face, there's no bristles. You can't pull it apart. I mean, you can, but that will fucking hurt. Your skin is naturally one solid organ, right? Whereas your hair, you can like literally pull it apart, right? Like you can see my hair is in little separate pieces compared to my skin. So we treat it the same. It's a bit harder with bigger masses like this ear here. I'm also just going to shade it like this here. Because then I can just fix it later. There we go. So I'm now just basically trying to imagine where I think the hair is going shading wise. So I'm basically playing like a place down and then pick up. So I place down the shading and now I'm picking it up with the eraser. Because I think the shading would go here. Also by uh, using the... Um, the uh, what you call it? The eraser. I get more sharper lines as well. Which also help the effect. <laughs> yeah. You told you told your boss about me. Oh, yeah. Did you leave a good review? Shit. <laughs> leave a good review. Yes. <laughs> Go. Yeah, nice. Hell yeah. More to the cult, more to the cult. Okay, then we pull it like that. I reckon I'm gonna do this as well. There we go.
And then some shading here. Gonna bring that in like that. There we go. He is watching with me right now. I'm inside the McDonald's with Greg. Ayo. I would like a <laughs> I would like a one large fries, one apple pie, one McAngus, a ten piece. With a large frozen coke with a dollop of the soft serve on top and like sauce on top, like chocolate sundae sauce. And a flake as well, thank you. <laughs> That's actually not my normal order. I just <laughs> hash brown too. What's what's another hard one? Um, oh, they don't do the uh, ham and cheese pockets anymore. Fuck. I know that one. McDonald's workers like used to hate doing because like especially on night shift. Oh, they never had that ready. <laughs> They never had that ready because no one would fucking order it except for me. I'd walk in like, what's up? What's up, Bozo? I want you to make me one ham and cheese pocket. And then they like give you this look like, I'm so sorry, there's going to be a wait. And it's like, yeah. I know. <laughs> There we go. I'm gonna do that. There we go. It ain't always broken. Yo! Not even once? Shit. That's like a rarity. A McDonald's machine that don't break. There we go. Let me just erase this and this. There we go. And what the heck did I just receive? I think I just received a meme. Hold on. Let me take a look at this. Sorry about that. Sorry about that minor distraction. I was just sent a fucking a little Genshin meme. A McBrunch. Make sure you're talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would, but you could be anywhere in the world, man. And make sure you don't dox yourself. Don't dox yourself in the chat. 
Don't don't dox your. I, I, before I say my do, my joke, don't dox yourself in the chat, okay? Be be internet safe. Be internet safe. But I don't know where you work, man. You could be anywhere in the world. <laughs> just have to clarify. Just have to clarify. Don't dox yourself in the chat. <laughs> Like, don't be like, uh, oh, I work at this McDonald's here on this street in this town. No, 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 don't do that. That is not safe. Like, there are there are scary people online. That uh, <laughs> Just be safe, be safe. <laughs> ducks, ducks, ducks. No! You're in Asia? Ah, oh, nice. Yeah, so this part, the shading part with the hair, because hair is so, uh, what you call it? Hair is so, like, uh, different to skin, again. Like, it's not a solid organ, it's, like, multiple pieces. It takes so long to shade, like, all this, it's gonna take fucking ages. <laughs> it's gonna take fucking years! Living in the Philippines? Nice. What's it like in the Philippines? I've never been Planning to going to Australia? Hey, yo, nice. Australia is an amazing country to visit. If you're from the Philippines, that's close to the equator, right? So you're probably going to want to... For the best adjustment uh, for like traveling, especially if you're not used to traveling. If you're used to traveling, like, say, colder climates, you can go uh, to the south side of Australia, especially to the island of Tasmania if you want to. Because Tasmania, there's snow there, it's got London weather down there. And down south, where I'm at, it's a bit colder. But if you are unsure whether you're going to handle uh, the cold, uh, first of all, don't come in winter. <laughs> if you can't handle the cold, don't come in winter. It's worst worse choice. Especially because there's not as much open during the winter. You're better off coming during the summer. It's where more active in the summer. And also, during the summertime, which, by the way... Uh, Southern Hemisphere, our summers are during New Year's, so we're just currently entering the fall season now, or autumn, right? So basically, you've just missed out on the summer, <laughs> so you have to wait another year. But basically, if you come during the summer, and you want more hot weather, you get more like, you know, you got, you got the summer break and stuff like that. So you get all the events, all the deals, all this stuff. And uh, um, you also get... Uh, to go to the tropicas, right? So if you're used to the more hotter weather, you go up north. Um, so where is it? Where is it? Where is it? So up north uh, in Queensland. If you go to Queensland, that's basically the uh, tourist state of Australia. Sydney also works, but Sydney is extremely... It's an extremely expensive city. It's the equivalent of traveling to New York, which is... Uh, in my opinion, for tourist wise, it's not the best uh, Australian experience if you want, to, unless you go to Bondi Beach in Sydney, uh, which is the the infamous uh, life surf saving uh, beach, All right? But if you want like a proper tourist experience, Brisbane, you head to the Gold Coast because you'll have all the theme parks. You'll have Dream World, uh, Movie World, Wet and Wild, Sea World. You'll have Australia Zoo. You'll have, like, so many theme parks up there. That state is basically, des it's, like, designed for tourists. And it's, the thing is, you can go in the summertime, but also if you think you can't handle the heat as well, you can go at different times of the year. Like, it's not a problem. Like, but that state is basically the tourist state. So that's uh, the, the state that's in the upper right-hand side of Australia. So the, it's QLD, Queensland. <laughs> You're used to the coldness? Oh, well then you'll be fine coming down south. Down south doesn't really have much in the way of uh, proper tourism. You have, obviously if you're old enough, uh, you have South Australia, which has the wineries. Right? They're pretty much just known for their wineries. There's not really much going on in South Australia. I'd have to, you'd have to ask Kira on that one. Kira, Kira like, uh, might know a bit more than me. Uh, but 
You've got South Australia, which is known for the wineries. There's nothing in WA. Don't give a fuck. If you're from WA, there's nothing there. Like, it's just one city and then a bunch of nothing. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I love my, my WA uh, people. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking the piss. But, like, uh, WA, not much I know about WA. I've actually never been to Western Australia before. It's like, there's only two states I have never visited. I visited every state and territory except for Western Australia and Tasmania. And that's because I don't want to go to Tasmania. And Western Australian fr fuel prices are f through the roof. <laughs> Too expensive. <laughs> Skip that state. <laughs> yeah. And then you got... What's it called? Um, and then you got... Uh, oh, another state as well. It's less populated, but if you want a more... Uh, cultural uh, experience. So more, rather than visiting all the, I guess, uh, the uh, the more Western side of Australia, so the more like familiar American, basically how you picture, you know, your blonde surfer side of Australia, city people, you stick to the uh, Eastern coasts in Perth. But if you want to go to places where Maybe you want to see more of the outback. You want to go to the deserts. You want to, I don't know, do crocodile tours or some shit. I don't know. You want to go uh, experience native things, you know, like native cultures, native, uh, like, indigenous stuff, you know. You'll go to the Northern Territory. That's uh, basically, at, uh, th that location is, like, at the very top of Australia, but rather than the top right, it's the top uh, middle left that's basically where the northern territory is and that basically has the city of darwin and that's basically really cheap it's a really cheap city but it's got a lot of uh, cultural history there and the further down you go in that state the closer you get to the infamous uh rock in the desert the red rock in the desert uluru also known as Ayers rock uh, internationally and then you've got my state uh, down in the southeast, that is Victoria. And that one is more of, I guess, if you like hipster stuff, that is the city to go to. We're very much the politically correct hipster city. <laughs> so, like, uh, you know, if you like your coffees, you like your fancy restaurants, you like your weird, I don't know, like, uh, knick-knack places, you know, you go to uh, Melbourne. Melbourne is very much the hipster city. It is also a very expensive city to live in. This is an expensive city to live in, 100%. Like, unless you go way out into the deserts of Victoria or out into the bushlands and the mountains and the ranges and stuff like that, because we have, in my state, Victoria, we have both desert, bushland, cliffland, uh, creekland, and mountain ranges and valleys basically we cover across the entire board right our deserts aren't as bad as say uh the northern territory in south australia right but we still have a pretty desolate uh desert we're pretty much at the start of that desert bundaberg brewery exactly Bund we have bundaberg brewery <laughs> we also have a massive wine industry in my state um we had the Yarra Valley uh, wineries. So, and that those wineries are pretty much uh, like our biggest, I think that's our biggest sellers of wine in competition with the neighboring state, South Australia. So if you like wine tours and stuff like that, you'd, you'd go there. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to go to Australia. Dang, this knowledge is giving me more exploration. Uh, yeah. Bundaberg Winery, you know that... That place, my man. Yeah. The one with the polar bear. Yeah. Bundaberg. There's also, um, oh my God, those wineries are beautiful. Right? You've also, if you go to the wineries in the Yarra Valley, you'll also come across the Yarra Valley, uh, chocolate place. I, f I forget what it's called. There's like a, it's right against uh, a vineyard. And it's this nice chocolate place that... The, the chocolates, they're expensive. But holy fuck, it is so, like... 
the chocolate is fine, right? And what I mean by fine is, okay, if you don't know the difference between cheap and expensive chocolate, uh, it's basically how much they grind the cocoa into a fine, fine dust before they, like, turn it into chocolate, right? And, like, well, process it into chocolate. So the finer that dust is, the more expensive that chocolate is. So that's why when you have a really expensive chocolate, it feels creamy to the tongue. And that's just because it's been grinded more to the point where you can't feel the, um, the powder. Whereas with, you know, store brand chocolate, you know, you can tell when you snap the chocolate. If it's a smooth edge, then it's cheaper. Uh, no, if it's a smooth edge, then it's more expensive. It's, if it's a, can it jagged at times, it's cheaper. At least I think I got that right. I think I got that right. I'm not a I'm not a chocolate expert. I just like eating chocolate. <laughs> but yeah, we got the wineries here. We got the hipster cities. We also have a massive um, penguin population and dolphin population in our bay. We actually have uh, rare dolphins in my state. Now this is my this is my sailor this is my sailor knowledge coming in right. Right, because again, I used to be a uh, for like twelve-ish years. I used to be a a competitive sailor, and so we have uh, a rare dolphin population. Well, there's only like a hundred or so that exist in the world that we know of. Right, so extremely endangered, extremely endangered, but they're known as the Barunan dolphin. And they're so pretty. Like, if you can like get a boat and go out, I know they they're hard to find in the wild because sometimes you have to, you just have to be at the right place at the right time. But the seasons or the months to go and see them are basically any time around Christmas, New Year's, uh, Easter. So basically, uh, during the summer months, they're going to be closer to the city. And then during the winter months, they're going to be more down south towards uh, the areas of Queenscliff, Sorrento, Rye, and then also over in uh, Eden. So that's basically, that's my sailor knowledge coming in there. I know where those dof dolphins are during different times of the year. <laughs> it's, it's really cool. It's really cool. And then we also have a seal population as well. Um, that if you can get a, like, a hire boat and you go to, what's it called? You go to, um, the South Channel Market. It has a different name for us sailors, but I kind of don't want to say it on stream because, unfortunately, it's a little bit racist and I kind of don't want to be saying that, like, at all. But, like, what sailors call it is a racist thing, right? You can easily Google it. Pretty sure it's racist, but, like... Uh, the official, the official documented name is the South Channel Marker, and it's basically like a little cone. Looks like a, a certain type of hat, if you know what I mean. That's why it's got its like, racist fucking name. <laughs> but basically, there you'll find sometimes dolphins, but also you will find that's where seals live. And then you also have sunken submarines. You've got. Uh, Cerberus down in Black Rock, as well as the Cerberus uh, landing or parking bay or whatever, the docking area, that's right, like the docks uh, out near the bay entrance where you basically, you take your boat out and it's like a horseshoe of rocks out in the middle of water. And basically you go, you go to that, my dog's, my dog's going nuts. But basically, you go to that, and basically, it's like a safe area to swim as long as you're inside the horseshoe. If you're outside of it, you just get sucked out to sea. So, <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of, like, um, sailor, like, boating experience. And then, because with boating, you naturally end up uh, traveling. So, I know, like, uh, heaps of stuff about the water. Uh... Didn't they, like, uh, evolve here? I don't think we actually know. They are somewhat more evolved. So basically, um, 
if you don't know how uh, aquatic creature camouflage works, you know, like why, you know, orcas, dolphins, and penguins have black backs and white bellies, it's because from above, they want to look like uh, a shadow underneath the creature that's swimming above, what, rather than when something's swimming below them and looking up, they want to look like the bright light above. So that's why they're, they're white on the bottom, black on the top. That's kind of how the camouflage works. And depending on how much of that camouflage works, depending on the area that they live in. So if the water is more um, a clear, they will be more uh, gray overall because the light will go nuts in the water. Whereas when the water is more deeper and darker, that will become more intense. And that causes the Baroon and Dolphins uh, camouflage to go... Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I could be talking through my ass. I don't fucking know. This is just what I was fucking told. But like, basically the Baroon and Dolphin is known for the white of its belly to go over its eyes and halfway along its belly. So like, it's really... Like, you can Google it. It's a uh, Baroonin, so B R a B U. Uh, uh, a N Brunen and then Dolphin and you'll see it. It's such a, it's such a pretty creature, right? So pretty. Um, a Canadian's actually real. I have a friend in Canada and they ain't talking to me much. No, Can Canadians don't exist. If there is a Canadian and they tell you there is a they are Canadian, they don't exist. They are not real. It is an alien and they are planning to do uh, global domination. That's why they're so kind, because they're trying to earn your trust. Do not trust them. For legal reasons with my Canadian friends, and that is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have one that one Canadian friend that goes, Hey, I'm a little bit real. <laughs> Only a little bit. Woof woof, back back. Yes. Are there bombs in the sunken submarines? You know, for science. Uh, I don't think so. So a lot of these sunken submarines, um, what they do is the reason, so if you ever go to a beach and you see a sunken submarine, they're not due to, they're not sunken there due to war. So the common knowledge, at least, I don't know if it's common knowledge for normal people, but for sailors, the reason why they're sunk is to be a breakwater for boats. And, or beaches and stuff like that. And what that means is basically uh, when, so if you know like how tsunamis and waves work in the water, basically waves, they have a certain height. And when they get closer to land, it pushes the wave up, which is why, you know, waves, when they get closer to land, they become more bigger, more violent, they crash more. That's how you get the, the white tops and they roll a lot. You know, that's why they do that. And so by having a sunken submarine there or something to like cause a, uh, a break in that wave, right? Or in that wave system, whether that be a sunken submarine, a rock wall, sand wall, you know, brick, just, just something to separate that. Basically, that will prevent that from happening and it'll cause the water to first crash against um, the submarine or whatever's causing that breakwater. And then the water, to, the, it'll like flow around it gently or through it gently. Oh, the common knowledge for most is that the subs are just for man-made reefs in fish habitats. Oh, that's just a, um, so that there is basically a side effect of putting something in the water. Eventually it's going to erode and cause like a, a natural reefing and breeding ground and safe haven for fish. But the original intention is to... Uh, form as a breakwater for boats and swimmers. So like, um, if you are anywhere near or know of a location that has a sunken submarine, just randomly out in the water, you look at it, there's probably boats nearby, whether that be docks or a pier, or it's a common swimming location. And that, that means that sometime in the past, that used to be, like, he have heavy, heavy waves, right? So that's, that's kind of why they're actually there. They, they, they serve as a breakwater. Um, a lot of other places, like I know there's a, uh, 
there's a marina here in Victoria where basically they have a brick wall that surrounds uh, the marina and then in the middle of the marina is a sunken submarine, right? And basically that sunken submarine is pretty much like uh, the original break wall. Right, so back back years ago, because this this I remember that marina is like, I think it's close to or is over a hundred years old. It's a very fucking old thing, right? Very very old thing, pre World War One, and basically, uh, the submarine that was there was to serve as a break wall for boats to dock, and also for people to swim. And then as the marina got bigger and more expensive, they built the brick wall. And so the marina now surrounds the submarine and then the brick wall now surrounds the marina, you know, which th that's just the natural cause. So now the, the submarine is more like a, a private feature in that marina. Like you can obviously see it and swim to it and see it on Google Maps, but like a lot of times it's not common knowledge. But yeah, originally sunken submarines, they they serve as breakwaters, just for safety reasons. Because otherwise you're going to have like issues with boats where they basically um, just get beat up by just the elements. Because the worst part about owning a boat is keeping it safe from the elements. And what I mean by that is, because obviously like, Say you park your- Why is everyone spamming game over? Why is everyone spamming game over? Y'all bitches. <laughs> but yeah, like, um, if you- Yeah, I'm yelling at you, you son of a bitch. He finally noticed. I noticed for a while. I just chose to ignore it and you fuckers kept going. Little shits. Game over, bussy. No, your gamer. No, your bussy is game over, bitch. But yeah, like, um... Think about it when you park, like, a car, right? That car, sure, it's out in the elements. Now think of it when you park it um, out in a storm. You know, it's hailing, it's windy, it's raining. That car's going to shake, might get a few dents. It'll be fine, though, because it's on land. It, you know, that storm has to go through trees. It has to go through buildings. It has to, you know, there's a lot of places where that storm can, like, basically be dulled down and stop you know it has to go up mountains down mountains you know on land storms are very much different to sea storms because sea storms if you think of the water especially out in the ocean there is nothing stopping a storm and not only that water is very malleable so basically water will just move it will just go wherever it the tide tells it to go right and if there's also a storm, it will be influenced. So a lot of the times, you'll have boats that end up violently breaking free. That's why during massive freak storms, chances are there will be boats that are beached, that have broken loose from their pens and they're beached because just the massive force of nature just, you know, it just has to go at them. Like, I remember once we had a massive freak storm in my state that caused a entire pier to travel pretty much an hour from its original location and go down south and crash on a beach. That's how bad that storm was, right? And mind you, that was a freak storm. So that was probably like the worst it would have, you know, fucking gotten. But like, it's still, it's, you know, it's a, it's like a possibility, you know? And then you got, and then you also got animals like sea rats and shit. They are stinky. Sea rats are fucking terrible, bro. Like, who invented sea rats? Okay, I have a gripe with whoever invented the sea rat. Okay, 
They stink. They're creepy as all hell. And they stink. Like, they actually just smell of straight shit. They straight poopy shit. Like, I don't know where sea rats come from. Whether they just came out of the... They, like, crawled out of the little fucking sewers. And like, ah, yes! I'm now in the ocean! Wee! And they just still smell like shit, but it just doesn't wash off because they've been in the sewers so long. But they fucking smell so goddamn bad. Like, I don't know how a creature can stink. Like, so putrid, really. And the worst part about sea rats is if they go, hmm, I'm ready now to come on land. And then they come on your boat instead. Like, no, go away, bro. Like, <laughs> fuck off. Like, <laughs> go find some other fucking boat to climb on. I don't give a fuck how or where. I don't fuck off, you little rat bastard. Bro, what the fuck? The sea rats are cute? Nah, bro, nah, you, you, you got a shit opinion. Nah, fuck you, you got a shit opinion. As someone who, I can clearly tell you have never dealt with a sea rat. I'm stuck, there we go. I can clearly tell you have never dealt with a sea rat. They are actually just straight up fucking nightmares. Like when they come onto you, they, oh shit, they're, they're cute in the water, but when they come onto your boat, oh, that's a different fucking problem. <laughs> the Grey Death invented it, true. Also, the artwork is looking really good. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. I hope it looks good. I've been working hard on this shit. <laughs> Uh, oh, excuse me, princess. <laughs> I didn't have a warning for that burp, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> that burp, like, came up so, so quickly. It even caught me off guard. There we go. So we got one side down. It's taken ages. Mind you, I did stop to chat for a little bit, but that's fine. The Grey Death? I don't know. I just- it, it sound, that sounded accurate, so I agreed. Think that the Grey Death is just a wolf? Yeah. Pretty sure he is. Yeah. Yeah, from uh, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's honestly so cool. Like, what the fuck? Why can't I be that cool? Shit! This needs a bit more here. There we go. I almost got the shading done of the hair. The hair takes so long. The hair takes so fucking long, dude. <laughs> like, if we put it on multiply, you'll see all the work I've done. Because obviously you can't really tell. That's, that's all the work I've done. That's basically what it looks like right now. <laughs> Let me change it back so I can see. Woo! There we go. Oh, 
that's the wrong pen. There we go. And then we get this. Oh my god, it's beautiful! Thank you! Thank you. I worked so hard on it. It better be fucking beautiful. <laughs> Is my art pretty, guys? Is it cool? Is it cute? Wrong answer. Don't call it cute. I don't like that. Uh, weirdly, like I know, okay, I know my art style is cute, but for fuck's sakes, it's actually not intentionally meant to be cute. It's just meant to be like little gremlin art, and for some reason it translates to cute art. This is meant to be a cartoon, guys. Please. <laughs> I didn't mean for it to be cute. The cuteness chose me. I'm sorry. Fuck! I'm just a funny little guy! I'm just a funny little guy! I'm just a funny little guy! There we go. There we go. Hell yeah. And then boom. And boom. True, I guess I could also do this. There we go. To kind of add like the shading back or the highlighting back. There we go.
There we go. Oops, I've taken some color off of there. Let me put that back. There we go. So that way it makes way for the highlights. Hello, welcome back. There we go. Now we're going to do this big part of the hair. Now, for what I do when it comes to big chunks of the hair like this, to separate it into sections so that way it goes from just one big solid mass to like, like as if it's like it's folding, it's malleable like hair, you know? What I do is I do a diamond shape of shading and then I bring uh, strands like this down. I, I normally like to attach one. So what I do is I, I bring this down, bring that up, and then I slowly bring it in to attach like that. Right? So that way it's got a solid piece there. And on the other side, I like to make it detached. So basically what I'll do is I'll do that. Narrow it down so that way or whittle the end away. So that way it's a bit more sharper. And do the same with the other side. Down here. And then what I can do then is then bring in the eraser tool. And then just do this. I think I might do this as well. Only because the shading is a little bit funky, but that's fine. And then I'm also going to bring this down here. There we go. Like that. It's not perfect, but it, 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 it fucking works. <laughs> And then we just got this little bit in here. This little bang bit. And then we got the hair done. Almost. Oop. There we go. And then we got this. That. Like so. It's normally best to shade all sides of the hair regardless of where the light is coming from because you can always erase where the lighter part is going to be and it looks nice and sharp when you do that. Which is why I'm shading both sides like I am now. Because I know that when I then go to erase, like on this side here, it'll create like this little nice edge. Obviously, like I'm not done, you know, with this part. So let me just bring this up. And now, so when I shade it away, it also separates it from this area here. Like so. There we go. Oh, it's getting late now. I must head to bed. Good night, Cammy. Good night, chat. Good night, bruh. Good night, bruh. Take care. It is kind of late. It's like 11 p.m. for me, so I do understand. I hope you had a good stream. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Chances are we won't be able to complete this uh, this stream unless I work 
late into the night, which I'm probably not going to do. <laughs> so chances are this will probably be a two-parter, like most of the, my, like most of my, um, what you call them? Uh, like most of my art raffles, because obviously I put a lot of detail into them, right? And in total, they take around like six or so hours to complete. Like that's normally uh, how quickly I can create something within uh, this time period, right? Or like within a time period, it's normally six hours to this quality. Because I like to go in and I like to take my time. I don't like to rush because I feel like that ruins stuff. So I do like to take my slow time. I also forgot to do that little tough of under the ear. But um, basically, I do like to take my time. I'm not ending just yet. I'm going to finish the hair. And then I'm also going to finish the cat's fur. And then after that, that'll probably be it for the stream. So if that that's still a little a little a little while away. So don't don't think I'm ending just yet. I'm not. I'm still gonna be here for a bit. But basically, we are at the end stretch. Because <laughs> obviously, I can't stream late into the night. I live with people. I gotta be I gotta be a little bit courteous. I gotta be a little just itty bitty bit courteous. Okay, so let's finish this. Oh shit! Wrong brush. There we go. And then just in here, almost connecting that part there, but not really because we don't actually want it to connect. So, what's up, anti furry? <laughs> Kind of nervous, uh, sheesh. Damn. What's up, what's up? How you going, how you going? You going good? Uh, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to draw a little... Little debs in here, there we go. Just to separate this a bit so it gives it a bit more texture. There we go. Currently on a treadmill. Nice. Getting some exercise. We on the we on the grind, we on the grind. I'm just gonna go AFK for a bit. All good. Take your time. No rush. This music's so fucking good. Are you guys enjoying the music? I am. I fucking, I love Monster Cat. The music is so fucking, oh, mm, crispy. There we go. And see, by doing the highlights like that, like I've done, it also just adds, adds just texture back. Thank you, Auntie Fur Furry, for the sub. Thank, thank you. I hope you enjoy your stay. And now my alerts are working today. They didn't work fucking yesterday. Why? <laughs> but yeah, so now that we got the, um, the hair shading on, I'll show you what it looks like when we add the multiply layer. So that's what it looks like with multiply on, right? We still gotta add the highlights and stuff, but that's what it would look like with multi multiply. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now what we're gonna do, because obviously I don't wanna lose this color I'm on because I want to shade the cat the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this. I'm then gonna go over here, remove all this, and then I'm going to color and fill. So again, same trick as I did earlier. Obviously, that was a bit ago, which honestly, if you've forgotten, I don't blame you. But basically, we do this. 
we do multiply so I can see it a bit better. There we go. As you can see, it's done that, so it's made the cat nice and dark. I'm also gonna, like, fix this so it's not, like, weirdly on the fucking eye. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Okay. So now that it's like that, what we can do is we can now get the soft erasure brush. And go in like this. Go in with this 50 over here. Go in here. I'm going to get rid of most of it. This also helps me with getting um, some of the texture out, right? Because, like, obviously, like, this cat looks like one big mound, right? You can almost hardly see if there's any shading to him. And so by doing this, it helps, like, build his, like, silhouette a bit more and his shape. And then we're going to go over here, go a bit bigger, the brush. There we go. And just like that, boom. And then we go a bit lighter over here and here and whatever, you know, like bring it out a bit. There we go. So now we got shading on the cat. Got a nice dark shading around the cat. And then we're also going to bring this down here. Just so it's a bit more lighter and not as dark. There we go. Just like that. That looks nice. That looks nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then what we're also going to do, because let me just put that on so it's on the, whoops, I've done the wrong button. So it's on the layer. <laughs> Don't want it off the layer. I would prefer it on the layer. Uh, what's it doing there? It's doing some fucking shit. That's alright. That's fine. I don't know what's doing there. It's doing some weird shit. Hold on. Let me just fix that. Whoa. Wrong. Wrong one. Or is it? Wait, is it? Oh, okay. It is the right one, but it's like being weird, so I guess we gotta be gentle. Okay, nice. There we go. There we go. Uh, in war? Yeah? I don't really know what, like, um, the, the word before people is. I don't really know what that is, to be honest. That might be, like, a cultural gap thing or, a, like, a lack of, uh, like, oh, not lack of, but a language barrier. There you go. That's the right word. Okay, and now we're going to go over with a bit more of a better color. Right? And we're going to go a bit more, like, here and then across. Oh, I've done my shading wrong. Okay, the shading for the fur will definitely be quicker because I'm not going to go in as intensely as I did with the hair. That's why the hair take takes so fucking long. Coom. No! No coom. Get your coom out of here.
Okay, we're gonna go hard. I'm gonna erase some of this. There we go. There we go. And then bring it back again with the pen. There we go. That way we get a bit more of that furry, uh, fuzzy look. I'm, try I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. I'm trying to make it look furry. Trying to make it look furry, I promise. I'm trying my hardest, Chad. Is it working? <laughs> Your legs are dying, a yo. That's a good thing in exercise, I'm pretty sure. That means you're like getting uh, like those muscles working. Your grandpa fought in World War II? Hey yo, nice. I have a, um, on both sides of my family, um, they fought in, I've got, I've like a, uh, obviously like it's a common thing because like, um, a lot of people were like drafted off the war, but on both sides of my family, they were like drafted the war and like both were sent to like different areas, like, if you know anything about uh, Australian, or I guess you would because you're in Asia, but like on one side they were sent to deal with the issue that was happening in Germany at the time, while the others were up north in like uh, New Guinea and stuff like that. Or with the Japanese at the time. That's just made me realize something. Because we have such a fascination and an appeal for the Japanese today, what do you, like, the people who, like, experienced the bad side of Japan due to the war think of, like, Japanese people? Wouldn't there be, like, discrimination? Because it would be the equivalent of, like, a, like, a, like, a, some people with the Nazis, how, like, they remember, you know, or, like, Germans, because they would remember the Nazis. And they'll be like, oh yeah, they discriminated against my people. Is it the same thing? Ah, uh, the Northern Defense? I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Because Australia had to deal with that. And then and then they attacked Pearl Harbor. And then America <laughs> finally did something. <laughs> yeah, I think we were like... Um, like, in everywhere in our history books and our history classes, right? Says we were winning, right? But then you look at the statistics and I was like, no, they were like advancing on us. Like, I don't know. We weren't exactly, we weren't winning, you know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we were winning, gang. <laughs> Something's amiss here. Pretty sure we were losing that. Like, obviously in our history books, like, that we get taught in classes, it's like, oh yeah, we were winning. We were fighting the good fight. We were stopping the, uh, the Japanese. But then, like, uh, you look at the numbers and it's like, no, we were, we were fucking losing. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> were we gaslit? Shit. Okay, and now that I've done that, I'm gonna basically... Do the same thing as I did with the hair and just gotta be so careful with this. There we go. And just get rid of this. So it's like, um, you know, it's like ball shading, you know. You gotta make sure there's a highlightable area. Well, you're feeling trippy? It's all good, man. Take your time. That's the best part about doing gym stuff is that you don't need to stress until you need to stress. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah, because I I don't think I've met any of my ancestors that were in the war. I think all of mine are either I just don't remember meeting them or I'm unaware of the fact they attended or they're dead. Like, I, there's some that I just don't know of, right? Whoa, what the fuck, Cortana? Get out of here. But, like... I've seen pictures, right, of, I think one was my pa, because he was a military man, right? But he wasn't really drafted to war. Like, he, he I think when he served, he would serve during the, the American slash Vietnam War, that one. I know, I, and the reason why I say Vietnam slash American War is because in Vietnam they call it the American War, whereas the Americans call it the American War, and we call it the American War as well. You know, like, it's just different naming. But, like, um... You know, like, he took pictures of... Well, picture, I say pictures, but it was actually, like, the old films of, like, all the tanks. You know, and we... I remember, because we, when we cleared out his house... He's still alive, by the way. He just had to, like, move and stuff. But, like, um... I remember years ago, when we checked these films out... We thought it would be like, oh yeah, family holiday, woo! It was family holiday, and then suddenly it's like tanks, like aquatic tanks, going in water, out of water, m army, military men doing their normal drills and shit, and it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> this was like a video of your family, like a, a second ago, now it's tanks and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Male moment. <laughs> But yeah, it was really, um, really wild to see. Like, obviously he, um, was never sent to war, like I said. He, um, I remember he did some training, but he was never shipped off. I think by the time he was recruited, um, basically the war was, like, coming to the end. Right, so it was like at the end leg. So he was being recruited as the war was ending. Which that's probably the best time to be recruited, because like, that's when all the conflicts like come into a close. Like obviously, there's no good time to be recruited for war. I think all times be to be recruited for war are shit, you know? Because like, you're <laughs> surprise, surprise, you're going to war, you know? Like, it's never going to be good. But like, I don't know, there's... Times where it's like, you know, better than others. Because you don't want it to be the start of the war. Because you might be in that war for the, your entire lifespan until you die. And that war can last... I mean, you've got wars that have lasted, what, 20 years now? Like, the wars now are becoming, like, slowly longer and longer as time goes on. Because originally they would, like, be a couple months to two years. And then you had the world wars where they were, like, a couple fucking years. And then now... Like, you've got wars that have lasted 20 years. It feels like wars are lasting longer and longer as time goes on. Which, uh, I don't like that statistic, but whatever. Hello, are you gonna race? Oh. Okay, shit. Nice. Instead of Cam calling him a war hero, he was like, nah, it came at the very end. Well, he didn't exactly... That's the thing, even though he served in the military, he doesn't technically classify as a veteran because he was never shipped off. He was still in the beginning phases of the recruitment, right? Because it was that thing, that old, old thing where you get drafted off and stuff like that. You know, the, the luck of the draw, baby, you're going to war, you know, fucking... <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was the one that was drafted, yeah? I know the World Wars were drafted. Were the, was the Vietnam War draft? 
the draft one as well? Pretty sure it fucking was. Pretty sure that was a draft one. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I could be fucking wrong there. There we go, and then we erase this. There we go. Time to continue, yes, yes. Time to continue. But yeah, like, um... With the war, it was like, uh... I remember when... Like, I was told about the fact that I had such a close family member that was technically almost shipped off to the war. Like, he was, like, um... Obviously, like, he was, like, still in the beginning stages, but, you know, the end goal is you're, you're getting sent to go to war. Like, you're, the reason why they're training you is to send you to fight, you know? So he nearly went to fucking war. And so I remember he mentioned that, like, he told uh, my parent, right? Or, like, my family member... That basically, if you ever get drafted to war, there's one rule in war, and that is there are no rules. You can't trust governments. You can't trust your leader. And you can't trust yourself. You know, there's more enemies out there than the enemy. And, like, if you think about the history of that war, he was fucking right. He was fucking, like, spot on. Like, with everything from Agent Orange to everything, like, he was pretty much spot on for the time. Like, there, in war, literally, there are no rules. Like, sure, we have the Geneva Convention and stuff like that. But a country that's in war can easily choose to go against it. Because either way, people are being fucking murdered, right? Like, people are being bombed, displaced, dismurdered, you know, like, uh, fucking... So, like... In, in reality, even though there are rules to war, it's like, uh... What the Japanese did in, like, I think World War One or Two, Because there was a common rule when it came to medics that... Basically, you don't shoot them. You know, they're, they're they help people. They're not technically meant to be shot at, you know? But then the Japanese were like, ah, let's focus on those guys. <laughs> so then that's when they had to get rid of the cross and like blend in with uh, the other soldiers because, you know, they'll be targeted. And that was like, you know, evidence of a country at war breaking the rules. Because, in reality, there is no rules in war. There are no rules. That's the only rule in war. Like, sure, you can say, like, hey, don't use, uh, I don't know, don't use nukes. What's stopping, what's stopping them? What's stopping them? A little, a little pinky promise? No, I don't think so. That's just, that's just reality, though. A lot of things uh, in life, like, sure, they have rules, but, like, you don't actually have to follow them. Like, for example, right? You go to school, right? Everyone's gone to school. I, I, I hope you all have gone to fucking school, right? Whether that be still studying or ex-studying or whatever the fuck. I hope you've all gone to school, right? But basically, um, <laughs> basically, you, we all know the common rule of, hey, you need to ask to go to the bathroom, and if the teacher says no, you listen. Like, that's a rule. But you don't have to follow that. You can get up, and you can go to the toilet. Right? There's nothing technically stopping you. Except for the teacher that's telling you no, but you can just ignore them. What's this teacher gonna do? Put a hand on you to stop you? No. That's a lawsuit. 
They might give you a detention. Just don't go. What's stopping you? Because, <laughs> like, that's the thing. If rules were always followed, prisons wouldn't exist, okay? <laughs> I love this conversation. This conversation is like... Uh, I don't know what happened to this conversation. But, like, yeah, if... If rules were followed, prisons... They just wouldn't exist, right? Yeah, it's like a because I actually used to do that. Uh, I'll be honest, I used to do that a little bit when I was in the school. You know, if I was like, I need to go to the toilet, I would put my hand up, let the teacher know. I not like, hey miss, can I go to the toilet? I'll be like, hey miss, I'm going to the toilet. Then what's she gonna say? No, you're not. Okay, I'll piss my pants then. You get a lawsuit. <laughs> Would you prefer me piss my pants? Cause I, I could do that. My family got a chunk, a nice chunky gift of like lawsuit money. Are you gonna let me go to the toilet, son? Great. <laughs> like, like a, like a, you could challenge that easily. I was like, don't be a cocky little bastard about it. Like, um, that's if you are in that sort of schooling environment still. Like, I'm saying that as, like, for both people in chat as well as, like, people who watch VODs. Because I do have people that watch the VODs. But, like, um, you know, if you've got, like, a teacher and you're like, ah, Cammy Cammy told me I don't have to follow their fucking rules. So I'm just not going to listen, not going to do this, not going to do that, not going to do the homework. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying, right? Rules are there for a reason, but, like, there's some rules where they're so fucking ridiculous, like, you can actually just... If you think, right, that you're gonna piss your pants, just get up. Like, it's your bladder, you know your body, they don't. And sometimes teachers power trip, okay? Sometimes they power trip. Or sometimes they misjudge their student and they think you're a troublemaker when really you're chill, you know? It just depends on the teacher. Like, I think I remember once I threatened to piss myself in class just to see how far this teacher would go. Because they were like, no, you're not going to the bathroom. And that was before I, I gave myself the rule of like, oh, if I, if I need to go to the toilet, I'm just going to go. You know, that was way before that, right? Like, um, literally, I used to be like, uh... Like, oh, I need to go to the toilet, so I'll ask the teacher for permission, da, da, da. You know, the norm, what you're basically told to do. And then the teacher's like, no, we, you shall not piss. But miss, I must piss. No, you will not piss. You should have done that at recess. Well, guess I'll just piss myself. What do you mean you'll just piss yourself? I'm just going to piss myself. I need to pee. If I can't go to the toilet to relieve myself, I'll do it right here in the classroom where there are multiple witnesses. I do not give a fuck. Can I go to the toilet instead? So it's less humiliating. Hey, you, you don't have the fucking balls. Try me. Try me. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was me at, at school. Like, if that's telling you of the type of character I am, Right. If that tells you anything about the type of character I am, then you 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 could probably picture the type of student I was. I was the student that just didn't take shit. Hated it when teachers power trip, man. Hated it. Like I've got so many like fucked teacher stories because I don't know, like the, I don't know what's with some teachers. Like this there's, there's a lot of amazing teachers, mind you. There are some fucking teachers out there that just love a good power trip. And I honestly, genuinely can't understand why. Like, either that or they hate students to which, why are you teaching? Just don't teach. Like, come on. Like, it's the worst job, right? Being a teacher, in my opinion, is the worst job. Why? Because you don't get paid shit. And you're basically working every fuck 
fucking day. And you're also a babysitter, okay? Full-time babysitter, like teachers right here, right? So school hours for students is like 9 a.m. till 3.30 p.m. Teachers are there from 6 a.m. Sometimes till 6 p.m. or later, depending on if they have stuff to do or not, right? Like, I've literally seen that shit, where teachers stay until it's dark, and they're there at, like, 6 a.m. So they're there for, like, 12 hours sometimes. So they're, like, and there's other teachers as well, where they will take work home with them and continue their work at home. Like, you gotta be a fucking workaholic, dude. Like, what the fuck? Honestly, teachers don't get enough credit, man. They honestly don't. Okay, let me click multiply on that. There we go. So that's what that looks like there. Looks a bit funny, but we can easily fix that. So let me just fix that now. But yeah, like teachers, like, teachers don't get enough credit, man. They also work on weekends, like correcting. Exactly. Like, if you don't like teaching, Pick a fucking different career because teaching is so work heavy that honestly, I feel like you have to like it to thrive in that work environment or you're just going to end up like so sad and depressed, which explains a lot about certain teachers, you know, like, you know, the, 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 the depressed teacher, right? You, you know, you know, the one, you know, the one, the one where it's like they're grumpy all the time. They're constantly drinking coffee. They don't like anybody. And I mean anybody. Yet they still work there. <laughs> don't know why. I understand it's for money. But like there are plenty of other jobs that pay. Like. No one would blame you for quitting. And seeking a better career path. Okay. Like obviously I'm not telling. Like, to, like I gotta clarify. I'm not telling teachers that. Their jobs are shit, underappreciated, and quit. Okay, like, teachers are very essential for any society to function, right? Because otherwise you can't, they're like, their whole purpose is to pass down knowledge, right? But there's like, there's some teachers that shouldn't be teachers. <laughs> like, they literally make the experience worse for students. Because students have like a squishy brain, right? Like, they, like Students can learn so much, and then you'll like, get that one teacher that could put an entire class behind. Like, I remember, right? Oh my god, I opened up another window, Jesus Christ. But, um, I remember we had this one, uh, this one teacher, right? Hmm. I don't know if I like this shading on the white of the tail. Like, on the body, it's fine. But on the white of the tail, it's not. So I'm going to pull this further into a purple. There we go. Same with here. There we go. And I might do the same for the hair. There we go. A bit more into the purple. Almost died two times trying to get off the treadmill. Oh no, I hope you're okay. That's not good. It's not good at all. But yeah, there's like... There's teachers out there that just shouldn't be fucking teachers, honestly. Like, there was this one teacher I had, right? Who literally, like... They... Ended up cucking the entire class of just a whole year's a whole year's worth of education, right? And it wasn't just a random year like in the early stages of school. This was high school. This was like 16 year olds, 17 year olds. That's like nearly at the end of their high school uh, stages where every class is extremely important. Right, because then the following years are like your studying years where like you're literally like grinding for your preferred career path. So that previous year is incredibly important. Incredibly important. And this guy, right? Like I was, so for example, I am already behind, I was already behind in maths, right? So technically I had to take, uh, 
because I'm shit as math. I've always been shit at numbers and maths and shit. Don't know why, just I'm shit with math. But, like, so I was already behind in the class. I technically had a different workbook to everyone. You know, anytime the teacher would assign work, he would assign me different work. Problem was, after three months of the year, he never came back to the school. Went on holiday. And then another holiday. And then another holiday. Which meant we had sub substitute teacher after substitute teacher after substitute teacher. So we had inconsistent teachers. Where basically they were like, oh, just do what your teacher told you to do last class. Oh, but miss, we haven't seen our teacher since March. <laughs> It is October. <laughs> and literally, it got to the point where students were complaining because we were being handed work that we were not being taught. Like, the teacher would be like, okay, this is what I've been told is going to be your homework. And it's like, we have not been told this at all. Like, what the fuck is going on? And so, like, so many p students and parents complained. I remember that. And they are all like, yo... Um, this isn't good enough. Like, th these students, literally, you need a permanent sub in there ASAP. Because this entire class is, like, for maths, is behind the entire year level. And that's going to ruin, like, most of those students' careers that rely on math. Right? That's going to ruin them. And so after, uh, I reckon in the last couple of months of that year, we got a permanent uh, substitute teacher. So they were like a normal sub, but they were like, oh, I keep being assigned to this classroom. And we had to tell them like, yeah, our teacher left in March and they've never come back. <laughs> that teacher was so nice though. They were like, oh my God, that's, that's actually just really bad. Okay, I'll do what I can to like get you guys to catch up. Even though it was the last like couple of months of that year. But yeah, like, that was, that was fucked. That was a fucked experience. Definitely. <laughs> um, you know, one time our Filipino teacher called us, oh uh, yeah, because we forgot some stuff and the principal became involved with it. Hey, yo, I'm now the one of a hundred and first sub. Ooh, nice. Hell yes, hell yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, you forgot some stuff, and the teacher became involved. Oh shit. I don't really know what that word means. Not gonna lie. That's why I avoided saying it because I don't know if that's a really bad word or not, and I kind of don't want YouTube to come on my ass. You know. That sounded sexual, and I didn't mean that to be sexual. <laughs> okay, so now I'm lightening this up. By using this brush, I'm avoiding the... Um, I'm avoiding the ends. So I'm mainly lightening out the middle part where it fades out. Right. This will give it like some depth. At least that's the goal. There we go. So kind of like that. It's a female Filipino word, a bad word. Yeah, I kind of guessed that. <laughs> when you put it in quotes, it's like, okay, that's a bad word. <laughs> I don't know if I should say that or not. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. Gotta lighten this a bit more. There we go. There we go. Oh, my fucking headphones. There we are. My headphones were coming off. <laughs> Okay, so now that we got the base shading done, right, now we can go in for the highlights. 
Oh, wait, before I'm going to do that, I'm going to go in with the slight blur tool. Right, or the blend tool, I should say, and just fluff it out a bit, right? Because a lot of these are hard lines. And sometimes they don't need to be. Because while hard lines do look nice, they don't always uh, suit. And sometimes blurring them out does a better job as well. Because it also spreads the colour as well and it makes it look more smoky. Like that. See? Like that. Boom. Like that. Boom. And then this side too. There we go. And then we're going to go find that cat's fur. There we go. There we go. So that way it's got a bit a better transition to the fur shading. There you go. Just like that. There you go. So it looks a bit more like natural. And so now, 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 if we get rid of all the shading so I could get this base coat color. There we go. So now what we can do is first we save. Gotta remember, we gotta remember to save. Ah! Did I save? Shit! Okay, I saved. Good, 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 good. Good, 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 good. Okay. So now that we saved, now what we can do is drink my uh, vanilla Coke because I want uh, like a sip. <laughs> mm -mm -mm -mm. And now what we do is now we pull this to the lighter color to add the shading. Now as you remember, red is warm, uh, blue is cold, but if we pull it to the purple, that creates a shadow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it to the green instead. Because that is the closest way to get to yellow. So I'll pull it right up to maybe this light blue here. Maybe pull it into the green a bit. Because that's the closest way to this over here. I'm going to pull it up. There we go. So now what we're going to do is make sure I'm not erasing anything. Okay, I am. So let me just add this layer here. And now we're going to go back into the, <laughs> into the fucking hair. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to be adding highlights. Which, luckily, is a lot quicker. Because watch this. Boom, 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 boom. 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 Right? You think, you think it's like, oh no! Oh no! We got it, we got it, we got to highlight it, gang. We got to highlight it. I think the fuck not. I'm going to... Boom, 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 boom. Wait, shit. I've done it wrong. Gonna boom, 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 boom. There we go. Like that. There you go. That's your highlight. Also, that's a bit light. Let me just. It's not the right uh color. There we go. Boom. I'm also gonna bring that down because that looks a bit too bright. There we go. There we go. So back into the jet. There we go. Okay, I'm just remember I gotta wake up super early tomorrow, so I'm gonna need to hit, uh, get in bed. Oh, good. Hope you enjoyed the stream. I won't be too much longer, but depending on how long this takes, that, that's another story. <laughs> this is taking a while. Shit. Just like that. Just quick lines. Too easy then you get the fingertip brush boom 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 same thing again oh
like so. And just like that, it looks really nice. It gives it like a... I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> ah! The cry! Don't cry! Don't cry. Okay, I think I've done too much there. So let me just add a little bit. There we go. A bit like that. And then like this. There we go. Same thing over here. Maybe just a little. Don't need too much. Just enough to get the point across that, hey, there's shading here. Might bring this down as well. There we go. Because we don't need it too bright. I reckon like that. And then boom, 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 boom. There we go. And then like here. And then again, we do fingertip. Uh, we're gonna add a bit more in there. There we go. Nice. I am now the last person, I think. Maybe, maybe. At least the last person that's chatting. There could be lurkers, you never know. But that's okay. <laughs> that happens when I start my streams later. I did start the stream a bit late, unfortunately. I had to delay it by an hour 30. So that is to be expected. Oh, that shading is actually dreadful. What am I doing? I think I did it again with the shit shading. I'm going too big. <laughs> so go big here. And then little here. Nice. Okay. Bit more. There we go. Mm. We can always add some here. There we go. Nice. Some over here as well. Like that. Sh fluff out this part here. Then this as well. And then over here. And then over here as well. Like so. Might pull that up a bit. There we go. And then that down. There. Again over here. Up. 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 There we go. 
Use the you can use the brush to like uh, work with the color as well. So if you don't like where the color's placed, you just use the brush to push it where you want it to go. You know, if I don't like it like here, I could just push it up. And it's probably better you do that as well because it looks nicer when you do. Uh, yo, Cammy, I'm back from my tuitions. How are you doing, Sunshine? How's the drawing? The drawing's all good. It looks like this so far. We're just doing the highlights of the hair. Which is probably my favorite part because it's so satisfying to watch form. Not gonna lie. So satisfying. There we go. Like so, and then we're gonna pull this up at the edge here. Pull this up at the edge here, down at the edge here. Up, down, up. So you can pretty much use the brush to like, create more like sharp angles, if that makes sense. Like so. There we go. And then up here so we can properly separate this. There we go. It's looking really beautiful, like for all. Thank you. And then, boom. Boom, 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 boom. So this is kind of how I'm doing it. Let's pull that up a bit. And then back down. There we go. Up, maybe here. There you go. And then just a little bit under here. Only a little bit because like this is meant to be behind the character so it's not going to be much going on back here. So I want to basically like blend this right out so it's very faded. Same thing with over here. Trying to blend this out so it's nice and faded. There we go. And then what I can do is I can then bring... Oh, not that down. Wrong one. I can then click on overlay. Oh! <laughs> oh it doesn't like doing that to lighter colors, I guess. Screen. Is it screen? It is screen. But this is a little bit too bright, so we're going to go over to the gray a bit more. And we're going to change the color a bit. Maybe even bring it down more. Hmm. I'm going to put some color back in. We'll go a bit deeper. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. That's a good color. That's a good color. You're going to shoot the hay and sleep? Oh, good. Good night, gamer. I understand my stream is getting a bit later than it normally does, so I do understand, and I hope you had a good time. I'll see you next time. I'm gonna leave for now. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hope you had a good time at the gym. <laughs> and I hope you guys enjoyed your stay at the at the stream. Oh shit. There we go. And then, 
What we do, because this is more of a smoother surface, I'm gonna get a brush. Uh, yep, this one. Uh, that actually might be too smooth. There we go. Uh, and bring that down. There we go. And this one. Because this is meant to be fur, right? So we gotta make it a bit more smoother. And so then we just do this. Like so. Done. Done the hair. Done, done, done. There we go. And then what we can also do is then also like add like a, a brush to it. But I'll do that after I shade the cat. Because obviously like there's more to it than just adding highlights and shading to hair. Like you can make hair basically sparkle and glow if you want to. And also, like, for example, in the pic reference, like the reference picture there, you can make the skin also glow onto the hair, which adds a, adds a cool anime effect. It's basically an easy way of shading. Which I, not gonna lie, I like. I like that a lot. Okay. So, let's see, let's see. Hmm. I guess I could use, uh, first of all, I'm just gonna grab this one, grab a new layer, because I don't want to fuck up. I cannot fuck up. Not now. Get the kneaded eraser in here. And I'm gonna just use that to push this back just a little. With a texture and then a hard I'm gonna use a hard brush to bring this right back need to race again and then over here whoa why did I move that huh What do I do? What the fuck, man? <sighs> I've done a meme, haven't I? Put that back in there. Don't move my vector eraser, okay? Oh my goodness, it's moved. <laughs> Go in there. There we go. What a bastard. Put you there. Why would you do that? Don't do that. Bad, bad, bad. But yeah, it's all good if people need to like go rest. I understand. The stream has been running for a while. Appreciate y'all for joining. <laughs> Oops. This one is a tad huge. So let me just bring this back a bit. Like so, there we go. First, I'm gonna get rid of all this at the ears. Because I don't want this on this character yet. You know, the character's already been highlighted, so we don't need to highlight it again.
And we're gonna do this, there we go. And this, this, and then I'm also gonna go in the hard eraser to fix this eye here. So I don't want any highlighting on the eye. And then I'm gonna go in with the kneaded, make it a bit bigger, or a bit bigger than that. There we go. The reason why I'm using a textured uh, eraser as well is because this is meant to be fur and I want to simulate that as best to my ability. And the easiest way to do that a lot of times is through brushes. Sure, it's a bit more annoying, but it works. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> That's what I always say. And then if it's too rough, we just get a soft brush and there you go. There we go. Hmm, I feel like this still needs to be lighter. There we go, like that. And then again here. So it's the same thing. And then I feel like if I do screen, there we go, and then screen. Was it lighten? No, I think it's screen. There we go. That way it adds a bit of highlighting to the characters. And then what we can do is we can add a little... Oh, first of all, I can actually uh, push back this. So what we can do is get the soft brush and push this back a little bit. So that way it's not as intense. There we go. So I'm just pushing, I'm just pushing the color back. I'm just eyeballing it. Anytime I see like it's too, too, uh, what you call it? Too, um, bright. I just push it back and be like, nope, you need to darken a bit. This hair is too bright. Especially since we're going to go in with a airbrush to make it lighter. So it's about to come lighter again, and because the hair is meant to be dark, I want to keep it as dark as possible. I don't want to overwhelm the palette. There we go. Nice. Oh, I missed a bit there. Oh, that's the wrong layer. <laughs> There we go. So now you can see the shading again because I've I've darkened it. I've basically got rid of most of it and it's a bit more darkened. So now when I do this, this is now going to be the airbrush. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to go in. Oops. And it doesn't matter if we go over a little bit onto the other layers. It's kind of a good thing to do that at times. Like over the other colors. Because you want it to be like the colors spreading almost. So see how the colors now spreading over to the other colors. So there's some going on the face here. There's others going on like the... The body here you know and then what we can also do is we can then erase again so then like that and we do screen again and just like that boom 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 like we can see here the shirt has now got some shading on it even though it hasn't been touched yet and it's not ready to be touched yet or it is ready to be touched yet but, like, I haven't touched it yet because I've, I've got other parts of the picture I need to finish. But yeah, 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 yeah. What I'm also going to do, 
Just for just for special effect, really. Is I'm gonna go here? I'm gonna see. No. There we go. I'm gonna go over this in a bright red because I need to see where I'm putting these. Basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first make off a really, really small. Uh, not that small. Just doing this. And my reasoning is because then I'm going to make it like a white. Give it a glow. That way it gives the hair a little bit of a glittery look. Because this is a Sailor Moon inspired character, I'm pretty sure. And Sailor Moon is a very sparkly show. And so I kind of want to, like, give it a bit of sparkle. You know, what kind of creator, what kind of artist would I be if I didn't acknowledge, like, the inspiration, right? I'd be a shit creator. Hey. <laughs> Like, that's why people entrust you to draw them art, you know? They entrust that you're gonna be as close to the original as possible. Also, I should take that off. Because that's over the moon thing, and I don't want that. Oh. Okay, there we go. So just like that. Uh, does it triple over? Yes, it does. Okay. And it also trickles over onto the tail, which I don't want. And now I can then do this on the tail. There we go. And then again over here. And then on the pause, just a little bit. Okay, and now what I do is I bring it back to this blue, make it bright. Hey, what the hell? There we go. So now it's gonna be this bright blue. Now we don't want it to be a bright blue forever. Right. Don't want it to be bright blue forever. Because obviously that's... <laughs> that's not the positive thing. You know, that's not positive. So what we do is we double it. Hide one. And this one is going to be the under blurring layer. So blur. I think this one. There you go. <laughs> Excuse me. And then... Go in with a soft eraser. I shouldn't have needed because then we can get that texture in. And we start bringing it back. There you go. So just like that, we're now bringing the glitter back into a more neutral form.
I think I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter here. A little bit lighter here. And then do the same thing over here. Bring some of this blur off. Only a little, not by much. There you go. I reckon also what I'm gonna do is because this is like that, right? I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do overlay. There you go. And same thing with this glitter. I'm gonna overlay it. There you go. So it's more subtle. Rather than being like a primary thing, it's more of a subtle little little detail. So when you zoom in. Actually, actually, what I can do, what I can do. No 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 no. Bring it back to normal and copy and paste. There we go. And then what I can do is I can then do overlay, do this, and then add glow. And then bring that down. And then what I can do too is I can then pull it out. Which I know will look fucking weird, right? So let me just quickly fix that. Switch it up here. There we go. And then we get the needed racer to fix some of these. So maybe more in the middle parts here. You get rid of some because it's gonna look weird otherwise. And then down here, we'll get rid of some of this. Get rid of some of the, the edge. There we go. We go. There we go. Look at that. It's all glittery and nice. And that way, later when we add like little glitter effects to the hair as well, because I'm gonna use a brush to add like glitter to the character, to the crescents, to the hair, everything. We're gonna make this nice and sparkly. It will sparkle more because there will already be pre-established shines and glitters in the hair. And that's kind of how you do it. You know. And it looks really nice. It looks really nice. But yeah. So that's, uh, I reckon that's going to be it for today's stream. I will continue this one next week. But basically, yeah. Thank you so much for coming, guys. It is like almost midnight. I am fucking exhausted. <laughs> I should have started this earlier. I had technical issues. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But yeah, thank you so much for coming. And we'll continue this next week, same day. Hopefully a bit earlier. <laughs> but yeah, I'll see you guys next time.